Katie did live? No one could have predicted this. What a blessing upon this land. Hurrah!
Hello! Hello, hello, hello! Hi! Hi, everyone! Welcome, 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 welcome! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! I hope y'all are good doing well. It's been quite a bit again. Ain't that the old song and dance with me, but I'm feeling so much better than I did uh, previously. I think I'm officially a hundo percent. Wahoo! Wahoo, wahoo! Which is another way of saying <laughs> I'm feeling good. Thank you for the for the wahoo. <laughs> um, but I feel good. I'm I'm still you know I'm taking the the rest of my potassium and and keeping an eye on my health and being so brave about it. Uh, be, I'm being vigilant. I'm being I'm being I'm being good. I'm being so healthy. And hey, if this keeps up, I should just be back to streaming normal. So more consistent streams. I'll actually remember to upload the previous VODs that are just waiting so patiently while I recover. <laughs> um, and yeah, we should be back on, on a regular pace very soon. Hopefully starting with today. Uh, Cause that's the plan. The plan is we're gonna resume our playthrough of 999. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. And, you know, we may occasionally drift off to another game every once in a while, but I'm ready to get back in the story. I hope y'all are. I've been thinking about it this whole time. We've only done one ending for folks who missed the previous streams. Uh, we, 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 we'll get, we'll probably get a chance to go over it once I have the timeline in front of us, but I'll leave that for later. For now, I don't want to keep y'all waiting. I'm already kind of leaving y'all in the in the ringer. <laughs> I wanted to stream today, but then, but then, it it something always happens where people know uh, people know when I prefer to do stuff, but then they're like, "Hey, we gotta do the thing. Let's go." And I'm like, "Ah, uh, well, we gotta do the thing." <laughs> so I did, I did, I did a few chores, and now I'm here. So without further ado, let's do some really quick housekeeping, folks. Welcome to the stream. My name is Katie Disp, you can call me Katie. Uh, if you are new to the stream, make sure y'all are familiar with the rules. Also, make sure you're familiar with the content warnings of this game. This stream is specifically 18 plus. The content gets heavy. Murder happens. Graphic gore is described in text. It's unfortunate, but true. So, hey, uh, you know, I usually, you know, I'm usually 16 plus, but for these streams specifically, they're for mature audiences. Make sure you're familiar with the warnings. There's also distorted audio, static, if that's not your thing. Uh, heads up. There's also shaky camera points and sudden jumps and cuts. Um, and yeah, make sure you are familiar with what you're getting into, because I don't want you to wind up feeling uncomfy, which, hey, if you do feel uncomfy, you can dip any time. I will not be offended. Uh, otherwise, make sure you are nice and comfy, got your snacks, got your drinks, what have you. Uh, whether you're lurking in chat or actively participating in conversation, it just means so much that y'all here and supporting and, 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 and hanging out. I, I really am, I really am happy to be back. I want to, I want to get back to streaming and chilling with y'all so, so bad. Um, but yeah, without further ado, make sure y'all familiar with the rules, the content, everything else. Uh, you're already doing the best method of support, but there's also, uh, donations and things if you want to go further, but that's never mandatory. They're just options that exist for folks who would like to do so and have the ability to do so. So with that being said, I think I've covered absolutely everything. So let's get out of this, this spooky little cave we're in. Get, get me out of the cave. Get me out of the witch's cave. We, we, we can't, we can't be at the witch's cave. We gotta, we gotta get to the, we gotta get to the, to the, to the Titanic, the gigantic, the one and only, the ship of the hour, the season, the reason for being here in the Nonary game. Um, oh gosh, where did my chat go? There you are, chat. Here, come with me. Let's, 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 let's go over here and let's do video games. The Nonary game, yes! Uh, I believe I have, going back into options for a second, the, the audio should be good, but if it is not good, <laughs> if it is the opposite of good and is in fact bad, uh, let me know at any time. I'll try to adjust it as needed, but I think these are the settings that we, we have had. Show. What are memories of, I'm kind of scared to click on memories of escape because I'm, ah, don't quit the game. 
Halloween jump scare. Surprise. Happy Halloween. Welcome to 999. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. We previously got one ending. We got this little yellow submarine ending uh, where everybody died. We, we navigated through the areas a whole certain way, discovered some things about the past. Um, we found out that Seven was a police officer investigating missing kids who got knocked out and put put at the place where they had the missing kids. There's a bunch of missing kids being experimented on. Um, and I'm going to be paraphrasing a lot of stuff right now uh, so that, you know, again, we can get to it. But, you know, going back over what we've done because it has been a while you know it's also good to make sure i remember um other than that you know we got to know everybody a little bit we got to know snake before he went missing which by the way there's like nine of us on this in this situation uh who was it there's ace there's snake there's santa there's clover there's june no, well, there's me, Junpei, who should have a nickname, but then my childhood friend June spoiled it for everybody, so I don't get to have a cool nickname, but she does, but her real name's Akane. Um, and then there's Seven, Lotus, and then the ninth man, who decided he didn't want to be a team player and tried to go off on his own, but... Then he exploded because he broke the rules of the game and there's bombs in all of us. Uh, but I also like kind of don't think we're getting the whole truth about the situation we're in. I don't know. I, I have I have my ups and downs. I have my doubts. Um, and yeah, at the end, uh, we split off from everybody. It was me, Seven and Lotus all together. We found every we found. We found the bodies of Clover, Santa, Ace, and I want to say one more. I mean, we found June, but I don't remember if she was with... I mean, I don't remember if there was a, a fourth person with that group I just said. But um, I think it was the three of them. And then we ran around all scared. And then we discovered all the doors were open. And then we found... And then we left. Uh, we left Seven and Lotus alone. And then we found June also stabbed, uh, which, by the way, I think everybody was stabbed. We only checked, I think, Clover's pulse, so she was dead. But the other two might not actually be dead because we didn't confirm their pulse. We just saw we Lotus just kind of ran out the room. We had to chase Lotus. Everybody died. Uh, we didn't find out who Zero was. We were put. We were put in this in this known regame by Zero. Um, but we still don't know who they are or we know that we're all connected somehow. Uh, and it looks like we're all connected by being tied to tied to an experiment, the child experiment that happened. Uh, so we're figuring out how everybody's kind of connected to that. And then in turn, eliminating who may or may not be zero from that information. Or, even, or I don't know. I don't because like there's also just weird stuff going on with like Ace, for example. Because like, because because like, dude had like a syringe on him from a pharmaceutical company, uh, and and then we found an exploded body on the other side of a door, uh, with with with. A snake's bracelet, but we can't even tell if it's snake. So we're just kind of going into a new run, trying our best to. We're, I'm I'm trying like I want to jump to conclusions, right? But I'm trying to hold hold back, hold hold it back. It's only the first ending, right? I'm gonna go into another one. I'm gonna go into a new new route. Open mind. We were kind of just naughty bad boys for for fun because why not the first time? So maybe this time I'll try to be a good lad. I'll try to be. I'll I'll, tr I'll try to have Junpei walk the straight and narrow. Uh, it was Seven who was the cop. Seven is the one. And so now that and now that my summary time is over for real, we can we can start the countdown again. I think, I'm trying to think of, of 
how to do this. Like, if I just want to replay the puzzles and stuff, or just skip ahead. There should be, like, a, a visual novel skip type mode, I imagine. Yeah, Ace was the old guy. The, 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 the big guy with the gray hair. I could also just look through things through, um, adventure mode this time. Because last time we did novel mode. Oh, but we can't switch this time. Well then, we've read all this. What? Ow! Do I just hold this down or just keep clicking? His balance! He's falling down! There we go. Ow, Adventure God screen. Damn it. Ah, what the hell? Alright, now this time we get treated to the voice acted adventure. Until we get to new content, that is. That fell pretty far. That really hurt. Damn, my eyesight's kind of blurry. Must have hit my head. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, no, exactly. Wait. That's not it. An earthquake! But it, it's shaking too fast for that. Uh, anyway... Looking around the room, looking around Where the room. Am I? Wait, it it stopped? What's that sound? Looking around the room, looking around the room. That's five. Five. What's this? Five mean. To be fair, if I woke up in this room with that creaking, my first instinct would be boat. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it won't open. What's this? Uh, is this keeping the door shut? Hey, hello? Is anyone there? I think if I was in this situation, I, like, I've never been on a boat, but, well, here's the weird thing. So, I've never been on a boat, and I've also never really been into boat media, but you know the one specific media that would probably ensure I would know I'm on a boat would probably be, um, the man of Medan from, from, from the folks who brought us until dawn. Just that, that weird, silly nonsense game that's so broken. Open the door! At least I think it was broken. I mostly just watch people play it, which I do still. It's like one of my favorite things, watching huh? people play those games, like as, as a movie what in of itself. Is this? A watch? It doesn't look like one. Five. That's. that's the same as the door. Oh, right! What? How do I take this off? Okay, this was something that I wanted to confirm. So the fir during the first run, um, we went over the rules. And we'll get to go over the rules again, but one of the specific things that was written down by Zero was that if you try to take the, the wristwatch off, you will activate the bomb in your body and you'll explode. Like, any sort of resistance, right? And so now it's like, okay, that was after this, so now we're gonna- I wanna watch him try to take it off. Maybe pushing something on this will work? Nothing. Damn. Guess I'll have to force it off. Yeah, he's gonna try to force it. <sighs> no good. This stupid thing won't come off. Like, like, I feel like there there could be an argument for like, oh, well, it needs to be like a specific type of like, if you try to like, like break it with a tool or something, I could see an argument for that. But I'm also just kind of like, ah, uh, but, but, you know, if you really want to scare them into not taking off their bracelets, having a guy explode and then saying fucking with the bracelet will make you explode seems pretty effective. <laughs> what the hell is the deal with this thing? Where am I? And why the hell am I here? Why? What the hell happened to me? Ah! Ah, ah, my head. I forgot that flash so fast.
By the oh. way, con uh, exclamation point CW for the warnings. This is... Hold on. Am I on a ship? I can't see anything. If only it wasn't so dark outside. Huh? What the? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? What the hell is going on here? What? What the hell? God damn it! God, yeah. Now just going hey, through the scene. Anyone? Like, is anyone there? Like real time almost. Come on, if you're there, say something. Just like he'll be like, oh shit, fuck, oh. It's it's not stopping. Not good. Not good at all. Okay. I need to find a way out and fast. Oh, hello. You weren't there before. Seek a way out. All right, now, I'm assuming I don't have to solve these puzzles again, because here's the flow, right? I've, I'm assuming that, like, for story purposes, I could just click here. Uh, outside the cabin. No? Am I not allowed? Oh, I have to really Whoa! zoom in. You have to be like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Are you sure? And the water everywhere. Uh, my head. Wait, is it, is it over? Whew. That felt too much like being flushed down a toilet. Damn. Flushed away. But but for real though, I think the first time also like during the the run, for for the most part, whenever we did puzzles, it didn't have his face there. That was cool. I liked having his little face well, there. Hello, water. Than drowning, I guess. Am I in a hallway? Oh. A door. Another door. A door. A door. Damn this water! Ugh. Let me go. Let release me. Release oh, me yes. from your waves. It opened. What? What the hell? Here we are. This is the inside of a ship? I wonder. We don't have our map yet because technically we haven't found it. Well... You can write the solutions down and if you use them during a future playthrough, like for codes and stuff, you'll get funny dialogue. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it might actually be worth replaying the puzzles then. This is totally a... Wait, what the hell? A wave? Whoa! Oh, Watch shit. out! Shit. Okay, I, I gotta get out of here. Nyam! Sea deck. He booked it. <laughs> B deck. Go, go, go. Hurry, hurry! A deck's next. Oh, and we get to listen to everybody's funny dialogue again. Yes. What? People. A lot of people. Um. Um. Uh. Um, uh I guess it's another one of us now. Uh, a, a, a dancer. Dancing queen. No, I'm not. You better get moving. Oh, uh, well, okay then. Yeah, she's a mother, actually. S silver hair? Huh? <laughs> One of us, huh? We're, what? Nothing. Did she say what her job was last Going time? Going up won't do you any good. There are uh. two doors, but neither of them will open. Fine, man. Wait, hold on. The, the doors won't open? Come on! Are you coming? You gotta hurry! That's nine of us, then. All of the cards are in hand. Wait! They're gone. Just what is going on? What in the world? There's an old man like a lion, a girl with pink hair, and a prince, and I have no idea what they're talking about. 
I wonder why specifically he went for lion. Huh? Uh, huh. <laughs> 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 Run! <laughs> <laughs> Probably my favorite part <laughs> in the intro. <laughs> hey! What the hell are you just standing there for? Didn't you hear him? Uh -huh. The doors on A deck are no good. I. We gotta check the doors on B deck. I seven. Now go. Huh? All right, I'm going. Hey man, that was dangerous. Huh? Four. Four. And this one says five. They're the same. The room I woke up in had a number on the door just like that. You too, eh? My cell was the same. A number upon the door. I opened it, ran down the hallway outside, and found myself in a rather grand room full of stairs, as I suspected the rest of you. M me too. Same for me. There was a door with a number on it. Yes, we all saw the same thing. That's not important. We need to hurry. You think I don't know that lady? <sighs> Open! Damn it! Hmm. Fuck, it's not opening. This damn thing won't even budge. Out of my way. At the, I wonder if the, <laughs> the, the, the reds are active at this time. I can't tell if it actually says vacant or not. At least from here. A body slam from a guy that big didn't even budge it. To be fair, this might be a, a pool rather than some other way. than a body slam push. Though I guess we're trying to make it explode. Oh. Just like the device next to the door in that room earlier. All right, so it is active. So that means this door is probably locked too. But still, I'm in my thinking room. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! He's so Are good there at any swearing. Other doors? Novel. He had scarcely taken a step when, at the top of the stairs, next to an ornate clock embedded in the wall, he saw a person. You. It was a girl. She looked to be the same age as Junpei. He froze, unable to look away from her face. He wasn't confounded by her beauty or something equally silly. No, there was another reason he couldn't take his eyes off the girl. Junpei had seen her somewhere before. He couldn't quite remember where, but he knew. He knew he'd met her before. The girl, too, stared at Junpei, similarly stunned. Her response suggested she'd seen him before as well. Uh. Huh? Without saying a word, Junpei walked slowly toward her. She didn't move. It was almost as though she was held in place by some sort of magic spell. Junpei stepped onto her landing, the spell broke. No sooner had he set foot, his foot down, the whole ship shook a second time. Yeah! The quake caught the girl unprepared and she fell. Watch out! Moving on instinct, Junpei leapt to catch her. Or so he thought. And then they took the worstest, oh. biggest tumble down the stairs and were passed out. <laughs> and this is where I skip ahead. <laughs> I mean, I won't like skip skip, but you know, we've technically read this. This is Akane Kurashiki, childhood friends from elementary school. Yeah. Far closer. Far too close for smooching. The ship is shaking. Everything is quiet. Can you feel the love tonight? Oh my gosh. Is that you, Jumpy? Can you jump in the house tonight? Jumpy, jumpy. The house is jumpy. Uh, Akane. Why hadn't he realized it before? The girl was Akane Kurashiki. She <laughs> just, just starts reading everything in the brackets very aggressively. <laughs> oh, six years. What was she doing on the ship? Oh, wait. Is this like <laughs> auto or? Hmm. No, I guess not. The face is heating up. At that moment, the adventure screen returned. And the worst- Actually, you know what? We can also skip kind of the audio for this, couldn't we? 
Or is it simply too appropriate for the Halloween s season? The scariest thing of all. Distorted audio. What? <gasps> What's that voice? This is... That guy in the gas mask! Hey, asshole! What the hell is this? Come on out here. I want to get a look at you. What do you mean to do to us? Nonary game. What the hell's that? What is he talking about? I wonder why. You know what? I've been kind of like out of curiosity also watching the audio levels. And, you know, in the audio settings for this game. Hey. There's like there's something in my pocket. There's there's Take only one out. voice slider, and why is zero so much louder than everyone hey, else? I, I <laughs> then it would seem zero has seen fit to grace us each with a letter. Would you mind terribly reading it to us, young man? Yeah, I'll read it as shittily as possible. On this ship, you will find a handful of doors emblazoned with numbers. We will call them. The numbered doors. The doors in front of you are a pair of the same. The key to opening these numbered doors are the numbered bracelets that each of you possess. Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Only those who have opened the door may pass through. There are, however, limits. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. Hmm. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute. So this thing on my arm is a bracelet. A bracelet. I'm taking a sip while they're talking. The purpose of the game is simple. Leave this ship alive. Okay. The purpose of this game is simple. Leave this ship alive. So then in in, in that so now that we're like this is the second time through, I'm just thinking about it, you know, like the purpose is to leave alive. And yet there are specific individuals, i.e. the ninth man and the mystery individual who may or may not be snake that we found uh, these individuals have been murdered. Is this is this Zero's doing, or is this someone else's doing, or is this something even more complex somehow? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Oh yeah, I I believe that all of this is pre-recorded too. Like, like, maybe, like, maybe, which, you know, it, it also, like, brings in a question, you know, how down to the minute does Zero know or expect things to happen and or what is in place to sort of help activate certain s situations? Because the, bomb, the bombs are remote, you know, or the bombs are not, what's the word? The bombs don't need to be activated manually. Um... 
And yeah. Smiles. <laughs> That's all I had to say. <laughs> like, you, you know, we all get it. I think we're on the same page in this matter. I hear a bell. I think it's coming from over by the stairs. Yeah, it's automated. Like, you don't need to really do anything with it once it's rolling. It's the clock telling us the time. It rang nine times, so nine o'clock then? I think it's 9 p.m. I couldn't see anything when I tried looking out the window earlier. It has to be nighttime. If that is the case, then we would need to escape by 6 a.m. tomorrow. Hey! You bastard! What do you mean by that? Come out here, you asshole! Ugh, that guy won't stop shouting. And the others. Huh. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> Sound off. Whew. Uh, I have way too many questions. Who is Zero? We're not sure yet. What's the nonary game? What's it for? It's related to the experiment that occurred. Actually, let me... This is the first time I thought to do this since start starting the stream. I'm just opening opening the, the, the book. What was this specific experiment called? Because there's the Gansfield experiment, but I don't think this is what the, the thing involving these kids specifically was called. Rather, the Gansfield experiment was just used to to find suitable subjects for the kidnapping. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's there's Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Cradle Pharmaceuticals did the evil no good experiments. Okay. Good, good that I double checked that when I thought about it. Is he some nut job just doing this to mess with us, or does he have some other purpose? It, this is th there is a very specific purpose, is my thinking so far. And why pick me to be part of this insane game? Now that that's actually a good that's actually a very good thing to think about, right? My based off of what was discussed last time through the route what we learned from seven what we learned just kind of across the board what what my brain is kind of thinking right now everybody is somehow connected one way or another to that incident and i feel like junpei junpei doesn't know about this and or was not kidnapped. And I think that... I think that his connection is that he knows Akane. And I think she's really the mystery piece I gotta figure out right now. Akane Kurashiki is important. But I don't know why yet. And I'm kind of scared to find out why based off of... Off of... Uh, the inclination that not all the kids made it out, which raises a lot of questions. <laughs> which again, like I said, I'm trying not to jump ahead. I'm trying to keep an open, others, fresh mind. Why are these eight people here? And the most confusing of them all. Why is Akane here? Which, again... <laughs> I haven't seen her since elementary school. Why her? Why now? Coincidence? No. There's no way. There has to be a reason. I don't know what exactly, but there has to be. Very well. 
Standing around here won't do us any good. Best we get moving, don't you think? Get moving? Are you planning to open the numbered doors? Hey, wait! Wait, don't tell me you're actually gonna do what this, this zero says. No, no, that's not what I mean. Lotus? I think I've kind of figured out Lotus's personality type. Lotus is someone who likes to be like the, the confident, competent uh, person in the room, but she gets easily frazzled and scared and, and, and kind of freaks out easily, even though she doesn't like to admit it. That's my read on her. I'm saying let's find another way. After all, we haven't really examined this place yet. We, what? Where have we not looked? Everyone searched A-Deck already, right? Yeah, we were kind of in a rush though, so we probably missed some things. Why don't we check out the lower floors first? We should see how deep this place goes. I can work with that. Then let's go. And so Whoa. they searched. What the hell? It's completely submerged. Damn. If the water level keeps rising like this, we're all gonna drown. No. I don't believe that's something we have to worry about. See? The water's not flowing. That means the origin of the water has been stopped. Perhaps this Zero fellow has used some sort of remote control to seal a watertight door lower down. He said that our time limit was nine hours. In other words, this water won't rise for nine hours. Then you're saying we won't sink till then. Well, that may be a little too optimistic. No point to wishful thinking. That's depressing. If we don't determine a way to advance from this point, we are stuck on A deck and C deck. Looks that way. Hey, hold on. How about we check C deck before we jump to any conclusions? We might find something there. Huh, you're right. I think we should look at the metal doors by the big staircase, too. They're pretty suspicious. No numbers on either door. And I don't see an authentication device, either. Nope. It's locked. This one, too. Damn, none of the doors are opening. Hey, guys, over here. There's another door behind the stairs. <sighs> this one doesn't open, either. It's the sun door. We'll see about that. Or hey, the Earth man. door? Give me a hand. Uh, I already forgot. Using force, I see. Let's give it a try. <laughs> it won't budge. Could you not just start shouting out of nowhere? You almost gave me a heart attack, you know. That is a pretty scary scream. Oh, sorry doesn't appear to have moved even with two of us trying. It's very well made. Idiots. Try using your brain first. Huh? Huh? Take a closer look. A keyhole? Right. It's obvious what we need to open this door. <clears throat> a key, huh? You got a problem? No. I just really doubt we'll find a key that easily. <sighs> What's this? There's a mark on it. D does it mean something? Hey, look! Over here, too! Hmm? More doors. Saturn! I think they're elevators. There's an inverted triangle button by them. What if they all pushed in instead of just the two of them? That would... That would make sense, but also it's like, how how many people can effectively all push on a door without, like before they just start beating into the backs of other people, you know? May as well try pressing it. Huh. Nothing. Maybe the power isn't on. Or we need to do something with this card reader. And there's a strange mark here, too. 
What is this? It looks like a lowercase h with a dash drawn across the upper stem of the h. And a fancy little curve. You can't forget the fancy little curve. This is the symbol of Saturn. Saturn's fancy. It's an astrological symbol. Then the mark on the other door. I think that was the sun symbol. We saw the same symbols on A deck. We did? I don't remember that. A deck, huh? huh? I haven't been there, so I wouldn't know. We may as well check again since we're talking about it. There! The two doors next to the stairs. The one on the left had a keyhole with a similar symbol engraved on it. She's right. It, it looks similar to what we saw downstairs. This is an Earth symbol. The horizontal line uh. symbolizes the equator, and the vertical one represents the prime meridian. I see. Hmm. The ceiling. Metal plates. Huh. It's as if it's covering something up. Perhaps it was a dome of some kind. Hmm. I wish we could get out through there. We, sh we sure did look at this and then never revisited it, huh? Be realistic. We'd need a lot of explosives to open that up. The windows too, huh, they're all covered. In other words... We're fucked. We're trapped. <laughs> all the exits go nowhere. Well, I'm sure they go somewhere. We just can't open them. You don't know that. For all we know, they just open into walls or take us in circles. No. I'm sure they go somewhere. Otherwise, what point would there be? And we can open them. Well, two of them at least. Four and five. Oh, you mean the numbered doors. Hey, wait a minute. I think I said this earlier, but I don't think we should do that. Hmm. We'd have to be crazy to open these doors. I think what I might do... If we do that, we're doing hmm. exactly what Zero wants us to do. I'm thinking about skipping ahead a little to when the ninth man exploded. as well exploded. give it a shot. Can't stay here forever. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what I should just listen again yes. because it's been a I'm while. I'm in favor as well. And what... No, is worth I'm skipping totally ahead. Because, you know, this right now, there's like, I don't want to go, I want to go. At least try? <sighs> we don't know what will happen. We should stay here. Yeah, they're very conflicted. We don't have time for that. In eight and a half hours, this ship is going to sink. Uh. Hey, shut up. Before we try and decide where we're going to go, there's something else we ought to do. What's that? We need to exchange information. We don't know anything about each other. Well, I guess it's I right know around the who corner. You guys are. Who you are, where you came from, why you ended up here. Don't tell me you aren't curious too. I agree. I think Jumpy is right. Jumpy? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about him. I just call him Jumpy. His name is Junfei. We're childhood friends. We went to the same elementary school. Wait, stop! Shut up! Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about. I don't want your lore. Zero's probably watching us right now. What are you gonna do if he's listening in? Oh, would that be bad? Hell yeah, it would! We don't know how much that bastard knows about us. Maybe he just picked a bunch of random people to kidnap. If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. If Zero knows who we are, he could go after our families. Maybe he'd tell us he had them to get us to do stuff, you know? But we still need to know what our names are. It's going to be hard to talk to each other if we don't have names. All right, then why don't we have code names? Code names? Yeah, we'll each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Seven? Why are you seven? Because this bracelet number says seven. 
You know, my, in hindsight, I guess it's really funny how, how he was like, okay, how about we do codenames instead of being like, okay, well, what are our numbers? Let's just call each other by our numbers, you know what I mean? He's like, codenames. <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, I'm gonna be Santa. Any of you chumps know Japanese? No? Well, San means three, so I'll be Santa. You know, like Santa Claus. Fits, don't you think? How does this read? I went. How does this read in Japanese? Actually, now I think about it. Like, like, like. Is is the the narrative that there are non-Japanese characters amongst them, or that it's a different type of joke? <laughs> Then your bracelet number. Yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. Very well then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet number is one. Given that, I think Ace seems appropriate. I'll be Lotus then. As I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals. I wish I... I wish I knew how your outfit worked. Which means, of course, that my bracelet number is... Eight. Eight. I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. My bracelet number is two. Since Ace has chosen cards, then I choose dice. Snake eyes, clearly. Which is particularly relevant given that I am blind. You can't see? I knew it. Why do you say it like that? I knew you were blind. <laughs> just, like, just like, hey, wait, why didn't I notice that before? Did I notice that before? <laughs> Never mind that. Clover. I want to be Clover. Hi. You know, like a four leaf clover. Good luck, right? All right, my number's five. So my code name is going to be... The original game in Japan had a lot of specific things to Japanese language, so the localization took a different direction. I will say that this isn't an Ace Attorney scenario where the American version takes place in America and the Japanese version takes place in Japan. Both versions take place in the same locations with characters from the same places. Okay, cool. Which makes that even funnier. Th Wait, <laughs> but th that makes it even funnier if they're like they're they're like they're actually all Japanese. Like, and you jump so Japanese. <laughs> Why well, have one? It's not like there's any point to it now. I just have I mean, to pretend. We all know your name already. You're Junpei. Like, they're technically, like, not speaking English right now. I just have to pretend. It's funny, though, <laughs> thinking about that that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you should all call me by my name, too. Because, I mean, it doesn't seem... Also, elements from the localization were added to the original Japanese script because the creator liked it so much. Aw, that's sweet. That is nice, actually. When when like you do a thing, but then you unexpectedly someone improves upon it. It's like, oh <gasps> yes. It doesn't seem fair to Jumpy. You're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after you told us his. Uh, What's your bracelet number? It's six. All right then. Uh, why don't we call you June? June. Yeah, you know, it's the it's the sixth month of the year. So you're June. Jumpy. You're June now. Are you good with that? Uh, yeah. Okay then. So this is how everyone breaks down. Oh yeah, I guess I never really looked at that. I wonder if I could take a peek from here. Probably not, Ooh. nah. One is Ace. Just mix it up one run. Two is Snake. Three is Santa. Four is Clover. Five is me. Six is June. Seven is Seven. And eight is Lotus. 
That means eight of us have revealed our bracelet numbers. The only one left is... That glasses guy with hair like a bird's nest. You. You haven't said a thing so far, have you? Uh, He's just been making noises. <laughs> what number are you? Mm. Hey, I'm talking to you. Isn't it obvious? There are nine people here. And you know who numbers one through eight are. Is he like wearing... How many shirts, how many layers is this, is this fella wearing actually? I'm the only one left. There's at least three going on. So you're nine? Yeah. What's your code name? Uh, code name? What do you want us to call you? We all made up names. You should too. I don't need one. Why not? Because I am not going to stay here with you. You've got some sort of plan? I do. Yeah? What's that? You sure you want to know? Yeah? All right. Let me show you. I'm going to do this! Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? The worst mistake of his life, that's what he's doing. Stay back. Ah. I got a fruit peeler. Which, by the way, I wonder if that fruit peeler was later picked up and used to do stabbings. If you get any closer, I'll cut her open. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Clover, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What the hell are you trying to do? I told you. This is my plan. What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything to her. If she just does what I tell her to, I'll let her go. Uh. Slowly. That's right. Just follow me. Here, verify. Uh. The left. Look on your left. Do you see the device on the wall? Place your hand on the scanner panel, the round part. What if I don't? Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could slit your throat right now. I'll kill you if I have to. All I need is your bracelet. <laughs> Just do it. Do it now. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Like this? Four. So that's how it works. He called that round part of the device the scanner panel. If we put our left hand on it, our bracelet number gets entered into the device. Then... Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets, and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Door 5. Why does this guy know so much about how this thing works? That's true. Okay. You know what? It's 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 the thing with um ba 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 ba. Like how the previous experiment made like like with the missing kids, it could have it could have had the same mechanics as this current nonary game. Which if that's true, why does he know that much about it? Was he involved in in the missing kids case and thus needs to die for being a bad bad exactly man what to do. good good you're done next 
You, right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes, I am. So? Th then you're next. Just verify your number like this little brat did. <laughs> what are you doing? Do it! The main... Hmm, but then the main question is... How... How much... How much has Zero planned ahead, right? Like, this is... This is something that he... In a way, like, this... He may have been set up to die, but also he activated his own death. He walked into his own death trap. Um... Which... Wait... Wait! No! Wait, 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 wait. Wait, back it up, back it up. He... Okay. So, again. If he was someone who was involved in the original kidnapping and the game has the same rules, he would know how it works. But why does he think in this case... If he knows how it works, he would know that going alone is not what you're supposed to do. So why does he think it's different? Why, why did, why, why, like, 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 if we're going with the hypothesis, we don't, a we never actually saw what the experiment was, right? All we did was from seven, like, when seven told us what was going on, uh, in the flashback, we never actually saw anything, but we heard, like, we heard kids running around and looking for, like, things that were from this game. Like, it was either, like, a number door, or, like, the red or dead. Like, I, I do, like, I, I do feel like it could be likely that it's supposed to have the same rules to a degree. And if it is, if, if we find out it's the same exact rules, I'm going to be so suspicious because some somehow some way this ninth man got the impression that the rules changed and I feel like the only way he could do that is if we lead into the other theory that I that all the jumping ahead is happening the other theory that Ace is suspicious because he has Soparil which was the syringe and if it's a cradle pharmaceutical drug and the cradle pharmaceuticals did the kidnapping then then he's also involved as someone and they might be ex co-workers question mark or maybe he's just panicking because he's know he's gonna die yeah, which, backing it up again like, how much has Zero planned ahead? regardless of if all of that is true or not pushing that to the back of my head because that i need to save that for later it's like how an ace attorney i think i solved the mystery but i don't i have not actually solved the mystery i'm missing pieces still so put that in the put that in the drawer seal it away later now how much has zero planned ahead because like does does zero know does Zero know that he's going to do this, or expects this to happen, or is this happening ahead of schedule? That's what I want to know. Don't you care what happens to her? Okay, okay, just calm down. I'm coming over. Yeah, like how yes. much realistically Verify. can Zero know? And how would he know? How would they know? All right, this is what you wanted, right? Now the device has both Clover and Ace's numbers, 4 and 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. It's the same as the number written on the door. But it won't open yet. Only 3 to 5 people can pass through one numbered door. One more person. If what Zero said is true, he needs one more person. Uh, who? Who does he need? He just needs himself. Get back! No! Farther! More than that! Go all the way back! Okay. <laughs> Wait. Uh, don't tell me. Clover's four, and Ace is one. 
added to the ninth man's nine, 4 plus 1 plus 9 is 14, and the digital root of 14, 1 plus 4, is 5. In other words... <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you were all so cooperative. Now I can get out of this nightmare. Good. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Wait. Here. She's all yours. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what? That's that's a wild question to think about. Like, obviously the answer is it would be very traumatic, but I wonder what would happen if he had taken Clover with him as a hostage. Like that that I don't. I, it would have it would have answered my questions as to whether or not the bombs in everyone are real or not. Okay. Have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well then, goodbye. Would you even be able to take shelter from him? Clover, are you all right? Like if you were trapped in a room with someone, or like not even a room, you're trapped in like, we know what that area looks like. We There's like multiple rooms in there that you could probably slip into, but could you, if, if theoretically someone had a bomb in them and you didn't, and that bomb was going to go off, like, could, like, could you, like, die from being too close to that person? Probably, right? Probably, right? You'd have to, like, get the, get the heck away from them. And who knows if, if they're going to, to be cool or not in their final moments. He definitely is not going to be cool. Yeah, I'm Listen fine. to him. In a few seconds. Damn it! That bastard! Open, damn it! Shit! It won't budge. Do you hear something? Like, what? Like, some sort of beeping. You're right. I can hear it, too. What is it? Why is it stopping? God damn it! You... you lied! Like, why does he say you lied? Lied? This, this wasn't supposed to happen! This is wrong! This is wrong! What is happening in there? Could you imagine Open he? The door, please. <laughs> I'm begging you. Could you? Could you imagine like Ace actually did something, and like he knows what he did, but like he's just trying to plant in like among us right now. Like, what is happening in there? <laughs> oh my! Oh my goodness! What is happening in there? <laughs> Help me! Please get me out of here! Oh no! Get me out of here! <laughs> Ah, God damn it! Why? Why won't it work? Engaged? Is it because it's occupied? Uh, oh my God, oh my God! There's no time left! Listen, I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! It was him! He killed me! It was him! <laughs> he couldn't even say a name. A beep? Did that thing just make that sound? Um, the display changed from engaged to vacant. Let's see if we can open it. Okay. 
<laughs> oh no, fellow trap people, I do not know why we are trapped. Oh dear, I wonder why that man is shouting. Well, it registered my bracelet number. But it won't open with one person. We need at least two more people. What to do? Hmm. I forget if these are wrong answers or not. Hang on. Because, I mean, we could, we could just click them to see what would happen. Because this would make nine. Oh, well then, yeah. Let's just do it. Ace, Lotus, you think you could give me a hand here? It's not that I can't pick Snake and Seven. It's that I picked that last time. So it's probably just, like, dimmed out to let mm. me know. So I guess I didn't try clicking on it. 5 plus 1 plus 8 equals 14. The digital root of 14, 1 plus 4, equals 5. This should do it. Now we just need to pull the lever on the side. You guys ready? I'm gonna open it. And this time it won't have the, the very graphic gore text. Oh my god. It's just going to be characters reacting. Good God. Whoa, that's pretty bad. He, he blew up. <laughs> June, uh, uh, are you okay? What the hell? Where'd this fever come from? Get squicked out so bad you get a fever. Uh. All right, okay, uh, let's just rest for a minute, okay? Uh, you think you can walk? When the squeamish tendencies get you. Here we go. How are you feeling? Are you all right? Why? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Do any of you know what the fuck is going on here? Yes, the nonary game. What's this nonary game? Come on! Anybody? Anything? What the hell is going on? What are we doing here? <laughs> it's ten o'clock then. That means it's been an hour since Zero's little announcement. Fuck! I've had enough of this crap! How long are we gonna pussyfoot around like this? <laughs> That's one way to- I forget that- that you sure- you sure choose your verbiage after a man explodes. We've only got eight hours until this time limit Zero is going on about is up! Let's get going already! Go! Go! No, I refuse. I'm not going to end up like him. Him? You mean the ninth man? Of course, who else? Blood. Oh. Blood and pieces of flesh. That's no way for a person to die. <laughs> I think he just screwed up. He probably set off some sort of trap, and that killed him. I'm not gonna screw up like that. I'm getting out of here alive. I'm built different. <laughs> <laughs> What's so goddamn funny? Oh, my apologies. You were just, uh, so very confident. I couldn't help myself. What the fuck? I think you've mistaken the situation. Huh? The ninth man's death. It had nothing to do with the trap. Or at least, not the sort of trap you imagine it did. Then? He broke one of Zero's rules. That was why he died. Quite simple if you think about it. Huh? You still don't... <sighs> All right. How about you take a moment and think back to what Zero said? Thinking time! Specifically, what did he say about the number of people? He said only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. 
Right. And after that? You've forgotten the relevant part. What did Zero say? <sighs> Zero said... <laughs> Pick a wrong answer on purpose. Hmm. What do you what do you think, Chat? What do you think we should answer wrong on purpose? Should we say should we say <laughs> Hmm I don't know. It's like it's like Sure. Let's say that only two people could go through for funnies. That only two people could go through, or something like that. Ah uh, uh. No, it, wait. Oh no, I got That's locked wrong. out of the best ending. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute. That's what the letter said. Okay. So Lotus, Lotus picks it up if you don't. In other words, no less than three, and no more than five. Exactly. The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a numbered door by himself. That was why he was executed. And Zero's watching us from somewhere. Making sure we don't break any rules. Oh, I'm not so sure of that. Why not? Because this execution system is entirely automatic. You didn't notice? There's no need for him to monitor us. What do you mean? Very well. I see it must be me who tells you. I've waited long enough, I suppose. I had hoped Zero might spare me the trouble, but... That seems increasingly unlikely. Do you know something? Well, I know a great many things, but yes. What is it you know? Here. A card? What does it say? See for yourself. Come on now, what's the point of giving me this? Give me that. Huh? The hell is this? <laughs> I see. This is Braille. Sorry, guys. I, I can't read this. Here, have it back. Okay, that was fun. What's so important about that card? I found it in my pocket. I can only assume it is a message from Zero. From Zero? A message? Wh what does it say? Calm down now. No need to panic. You don't need to force me. I'll read it. <clears throat> Bracelet number two. Since you are not blessed with sight, I shall bless you and only you with information. I shall tell you of the function of the red, of the dead, and of the bracelet. The red is the recognition device. Oh, zero! It will verify your number beside every number. I'm just gently gonna do it. To get, get out of here, zero. Ska get out of here. Spray the water bottle. Get, go away. Go, shoot. Oh, wait. I just realized a lot of that was important, wasn't it? <laughs> Hang on. Um, there you go. Here. At the very least, I can go over what I want to after Zero is done talking. Um, so basically, this is the recognition device, and then the dead is in the other room, and when you scan your watch at the, at the red, everybody has to go scan at the dead, or else the bomb in your belly will blow up. Um, let's see. So it's a small bomb, and the pe and it's in everybody, and everybody got one while they were unconscious. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got like a lot of that wasn't important, but now we're at the important part that I want to remember. I have no doubt. By the time you read this note, the bomb will have passed your stomach and found its way to your small intestine. I take offense at that. You take that back. I'm not Matt Pat. You take that back. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Matt Pat ruined theorizing for everybody. Now, now they call it Matt Pat. I'm like, no. <laughs> Let me have fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've mostly since it's been 
like a long time since I streamed this game and, and actually played it. I'm just kind of like going over information again. And then we're gonna go into the four door and that's gonna be the first new thing that we do. In other words, you would be unable to regurgitate it as a guest you do not try. As I mentioned before, the bracelet on your left hand contains a detonator. Think of it as a remote field, or timer, for the bomb in your body. There is only one condition to call it detonate. That condition is that you enter a numbered door. Once you have done so, the timer will activate, no matter who you may be. You will have 81 seconds. If, after that time, the detonator has not been deactivated, it will send a signal to the bomb in your body, instructing it to explode. In order to deactivate the detonator, Every person who verified their number at the break must also verify their numbers at the dead. Once all numbers have been verified by the dead, you need only pull the lever on its side. And the countdown will cease. Anyone who does not verify their number at the break will find themselves unable to verify their number at the dead. That is to say, if you can pass through a number door without first verifying your number at the red, in 81 seconds, you will be dead. You must also keep in mind that the number doors will close automatically after 9 seconds have passed. So long as the doors open, the dead will not function. You will do well to remember this. Alright, this is this is especially the important thing that I wanted to, to get the, the the attempt to pull off the bracelet we saw again earlier. Now this. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or the air exotic wearer's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. There is no other way to remove your bracelet. If you attempt to force it off or disable the detonator, the bomb within you will immediately explode. Alright, if you attempt to force it off, or disable the detonator, the bomb within you will immediately explode. Like, either, either Zero's lying about forcing it off or Zero's lying about the bomb. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. This is all the information which I can impart to you. How you choose to use it is for you to decide. If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. Hmm. Wait a minute. So using this information... If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. Hmm. So hypothetically, like, like, for example, like, if Snake was a bad guy and his disappearance meant that he, he was, like, doing no good deeds, which I doubt because I, I doubt, I, like, he was a kid at the time of the experiment and, and I, I think he might have even been there, so. You know, I don't think that's true, but hypothetically, you could say, oh, because Snake knew this information, he could have, like, whispered to the ninth man, uh, something, something, hey, I've, I've got a hot tip for you. I've got advice. Go on ahead, um, with this. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. 
At least if it's Snake. But you know what I mean? Like, like it's it's important to 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 have knowledge because then you could you could do sneaky shenanigans. I wish you the best of luck. Is it ever acknowledged why Snake? Uh, what? Is it ever acknowledged why Snake can? See? What does that mean? See? You might have to retype it. I don't quite understand the question. So it's saying. Yeah, he can't stream. That's why. That's or stream. S fuck. What? Yeah, I can't even say words. Rule zero. I can't say words correctly. He has the other senses are enhanced cliche. Yeah. Oh, okay. Only those who verify their numbers at the red can pass through the numbered doors. Teams can't add or subtract people after they're scanned in. The reds, deads, and bracelets enforce the rules. They're judge, jury, and executioner. Shit! A fucking bomb! C come out! Come out, damn it! There's a bomb inside me. Oh. What made Zero think creating this horror show of a game was a good idea? Alright. I'm gonna ask one more time. Do any of you know anything about Zero? Actually, I... I saw him. I saw Zero when I got grabbed. No, the, it wouldn't make sense that the experiment would be give children extra sensory perception because they were already just looking for, like, espers. They were already looking for, for kids with psychic uh, abilities, theoretically, or hypothetically, due to, due to like, the, like, being able to send information from, from one person to the other over, ex like, long distances. I didn't see his face, though. Son of a bitch was wearing some kind of gas mask. What the hell? Come on, guys, give me something. You know, like, surprise or something? Yeah, I saw that, too. I did as well. Me, too. I didn't see inside the mask, though. That mask, it was really scary. <laughs> that mask, it was really scary. <laughs> Things to say to blend in with the group. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Scary. <laughs> Not I saw it also. <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess saying the mask oh. is scary is, a, in a way, saying you saw the mask. Huh? Oh, so... Just poking fun. All of our abductions were the same. We were taken from home at midnight. The person claiming to be Zero had a mask on. There was white smoke, and then each of us passed out. Yeah, I don't think we had a knife. I don't think we had enough unless, like, unless Zero was a very specific height. Or, like... You could, like, like, you could also, you know, wear clothes or things that make you look taller or shorter. I don't, either way, I don't think we had enough time to really gauge Zero's, like, personage, person, personage beyond the mask before we got knocked out. We woke up to find ourselves on D-Deck, in a room with a three-level bunk bed. Because also, what if Zero has accomplices? Servants? How about you, Seven? Did the same happen to you? Oh, me? Like, like, you know, hypothetically, like, Zero could be many people, but, but because it's just one distorted voice, you know, you know, like Jigsaw, <laughs> again, like Jigsaw and how the, Jigsaw secretly had, like, apprentices in the wings ready to do shit for him. <laughs> yeah, well, mine was just like the rest of yours. 
Okay, uh, that's good enough for now. So, I have a question. Snake and Clover, you were both kidnapped from the same room, and you woke up together. So, what's the deal with the two of you anyway? We're siblings. Siblings? Uh, yes. Snake is my older brother, obviously. That means I'm his little sister. That really so hard to understand? She is correct, of course. Are you, uh, surprised? Well, yeah, but... Why? There are other people here with connections to one another. Those two, for instance. Oh, you mean between Jumpy and me? Ah, yes. You did say you were childhood friends, didn't you? Wait, you went to school together? Yeah? Well, yeah. Hey, you think maybe we could figure out who Zero is this way? Yeah, you're right. Oh, sorry, Sa sorry, Santa, I got you off. <laughs> sorry, I didn't think the audio would also get quieter. <laughs> like, he, like, they're all talking, but they keep walking away from each other and get quieter before finishing the scene. <laughs> You connect the dots between the victims, and that leads you to the perp. Textbook stuff. I can't, I can't, like, get tempted to want to do that again, because we're about to get to the new stuff, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get too antsy. Junpei, Jun, does any of this ring a bell? What if I only did it with Santa? Like, he always wants to say something, but then he gets a distraction and walks away. <laughs> Just to see if it works. I'll only do it with Santa. Huh. Ring a bell. Ring a bell? Well, perhaps you went to school with the son of a multi-millionaire. A millionaire? Son? Well, someone bought this boat and set up all of this. Whoever Zero is, they must be incredibly rich. Well, we can't be sure of that. To me, this seems as though it's the work of an organization. Not an individual. Most likely, Zero is simply the representative of a larger group. What sort of organization? It could be a number of things. An army, perhaps, or a research group. Perhaps this is all some sort of psychological experiment. Hmm. What makes you say that? It almost, it's almost as if you know that maybe this could have been used as as the basis of maybe another psychological experiment, maybe like a few years ago with some missing kids. If it is, then it's a pretty. F I mean, come on. Okay, a it doesn't guy's do that. Dead. Or at least it doesn't do that unless. I just wanted to see if it did it, but it seems like unless the character is about to be replaced by another character, it won't happen. Damn. No fun allowed. What'd you say? Yeah, it is pretty fucked up, isn't it? Anyway. I don't know who the hell this Zero asshole is, but I know for sure he's gotta be pretty fucked up in the head to do all this. So, in terms of how much I've played, I've only done one ending, and then I had a few weeks feeling so crummy and sick, and so I haven't played it in a while. So, this is my first back coming, or my first day back coming in, so I'm re-reviewing a lot of the information to make sure I'm on the same page with the story. If this was all one guy, then he's got some serious issues. I thought we were finished with that topic. But then what should we do? We should talk it through. You mean like how we have been doing? <laughs> oh my god, enough! All we're doing is talking! Talking won't solve anything! It can't help us find our way out of here! I mean, it can, but... Are you really sure you want to just sit around? We've only got seven and a half hours left. We already wasted an hour and a half of our nine hours. You're right. Very well then. There's only one way for us to proceed. 
Sure not gonna be fun running around knowing we gotta jump when Zero says jump. <laughs> yeah, talking has never helped anything ever. I spin. Including right now. Well, it's stupid to just sit around here doing nothing. Doing nothing. Well, thanks to Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. Correct. And so long as we all follow the rules, we should, uh, we will most likely be all right. But... But what? Who's going to go in which door? The fabled question. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. We can't have any more than five people in one door. I think if I remember correctly, all that they're going to do is split everybody up for us and then double check and make sure that I'm okay with the choice. Last time I went into door number five uh, and so this time we're gonna just be going with what the game suggests and just be like, yeah, okay, door, door four, let's go. All eight of us can't go in the same. Then it would so seem we will have to. Wait, I'm telling you. Come on. Sorry, but I'm not. Fine. I'll I can't go in there anyway. So they're going in. I'll so go. Seven and Snake's going what? to door five. Don't worry. We may part. How do you know that? Huh? Because I. That's not an answer! Wait. If you're going, I'm going too. I'm going into door five. Oh! Hang on, gang. Dinner might actually be here. We're having pizza tonight. I'm gonna take a quick BRB to help folks wrangle in dogs and maybe have a slice myself. Don't worry, music will be back soon. I'll be back! Wah!
jump scare. Hi. <laughs> let me click back into the game. If it'll let me. Hello? Video game? Uh-oh. Video game, where'd you go? Hey. Video game. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. I went to go click back in the stream and instead it said, hey, your video game, it's gone now. Aw, oh, man. Aw, oh, beans. Hang on. We're gonna go over here for a minute. I might have to close out of the game and then just reopen where we were on the flow chart. I think. Ooh, hang on. Give me. Put on. Put on. Let me put on some noise for y'all while we're just kind of chilling together. I actually. You know what? Now's a good time for me to. Ooh, is this a bit loud? A little. Hmm. Technical difficulties. <laughs> um. But while I'm getting while I'm getting this all sorted out here, um, what happened on my break was so I went I went to go get some food. I went to go get some food, and jokes on me. I forgot we were specifically picking it up from the pizzeria. It's a local place, and we were supposed to pick it up and bring it home. So I didn't even. Th think about that. I just heard a doorbell and assumed it was pizza being delivered. Forgetting that today is also Halloween. <laughs> I go down, like, by the time I get down there, there's nobody there. Um, and I'm, like, looking around, trying to figure out, like, pizza? And then finally, uh, finally, I, I remember, oh, that's right. It's Halloween. And, and I investigate about pizza. I go, I go, I go do some research into pizza. It turns out, uh, pizza got canceled. Pizza got canceled because the pizzeria is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays and we forgot. <laughs> so I'm going to have to eat a real dinner later. So I took, in the meantime though, I took a break. I, I got some more fluids. I got myself a snack so I can, I can be not hungry. For the rest of the stream and then go get like an actual meal meal later. Also, hi Ray! It's snowing on Halloween. Aw, that's so cool. I saw some other folks saying it was snowing wherever they were at. Unfortunately, we don't got snow down here, but... Oh, hang on. The game might, the, the game might have decided to play nice. Hold on. Quick, I have to capture the game. The game, the game decided to play nice. Okay, we're back. We're back. A dinosaur story. But yeah, that's that's speaking of stories, that's why that's my uh Halloween trick for the year. Uh I got tricked into thinking that pizza was coming to my home, but no pizza. No pizza for me. If anything, I'll just go make a pizza myself. I've I've got I've got pizza here. The folks were just dis discussing pizza as a, as a fresh one as a family before. But we got we got we got pizza at home. We got we got pizza at home. It also snowed on my first Halloween in the US brings back memories. Oh, that's cool. It's getting colder. It's coming. What am I going to do with you? There's nothing you have to do. If I join you, the problem is solved, correct? Yeah, and then it's the four of them. And then we're just gonna go ahead and skip to where we have our so option. Seven, the oh, the four. Because then Wait, we could just confirm that we're all going to Lotus get together in door four. Let's see, what would our digital root be? It would be four. Eight plus three plus six plus five is 22. So the digital root of 22. It's four. Four. Add up our four. Then we can go. Yeah, so the team is. Seven. And then they're all going Lotus. in there. They're all going in there. Are these really the teams I want? Here, just a review. Seven, Snake, Clover, and Ace are going to five. Lotus, Santa, June, myself, Junpei are going to four. Which we haven't really spent. Like last time we got to spend time with Lotus towards the end. But we haven't, like, we spent, we also got to spend, like, I mean, we gotta spend a little bit of time, but this is like the first time we'll like start right off the bat with June and Santa and Lotus. So this is this is this is a new new in a whole exciting way. I'm excited. We're going right in, we're right no, into the no puzzles. Five is what remains of the ninth man? I 
never want to see that thing again, but something's telling me that it'd be a good idea to examine the corpse, even just a little closer. Last time we spent, we basically spent our first two puzzle rooms with Snake. I think it was like the bedrooms plus the, the casino room. And then after that, we wound up in the, the medical bay, splitting up, and then Snake went missing for the rest of the game, unfortunately. Of course, if I went through door five, I wouldn't be going with Lotus and Santa. I could bring June with me through door five, but that means she'd have to see the body in there. I don't want to put her through that. Yeah, wait, that's right. He said that. He said I could bring June with me through door five, but that means she'd have to see the body in there. Should I stay silent and go through door four? Or should I stop them and insist on door five? All right, then. Because then I thought by choosing door five, I would just automatically, like, even if I didn't want to, I would just take June with me. Maybe it's because I previously opened it with just those two that I couldn't do that. It seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? I'm going through door five. We're over there. The door's not I'm gonna going. to skip a little bit I, more. Which door? Here we go. Which door? Yeah, there was only two choices. So we're gonna we're going to do door four, and from here on out, we can return to novel mode for a bit. I'll go through door four with Lotus, Santa, and June. Yeah, okay. That's how it is. There's nothing to worry about. I just need to stay by her side. This is the June run. June. Akane Kurushiki. This should be fine. It's no problem this way. I should see the other four off. He made no shows of affection, but Junpei saw her as something more than just a friend from his childhood. Ooh. Looks like Ace and the others are going. He watched the other four walk toward their door. Ace, Snake, Clover, and San Seven I don't know why, I, my, I don't know why Rule Zero tries to kick in. I don't say words correctly, especially names. <sighs> Junpei said nothing as they left. Not even a good luck or be careful. Before long, they had reached door five. They talked to one another for a few seconds, saying things Junpei couldn't hear, and then laid their hands one by one on the scanner panel of, of the red. Now then. Ace grabbed the lever. His face tight with determination. He turned over his shoulder to look at Junpei and his companions. Goodbye. Be careful. Yeah, there you go, Lotus. Lotus, Lotus gets it. Lotus gets it. Be careful. Rule zero more like zero's rules. <laughs> You know what? I guess we do have a zero rule uh, unrelated to the nonary game. That's funny in hindsight. <laughs> As Ace pulled the lever, the door swung open, the mouth of a great hungry beast. <sighs> so horrible. Beyond the door, Junpei knew, lay the sad remains of the ninth man. It did not surprise him that Ace, Clover, and Seven hesitated. The body was not a pleasant thing. What are you doing? We need to hurry. Snake had no such problems, as his blindness made him immune to the horror. He stepped through the door, his feet making a wet splack in the pool of blood. Snake, your shoes! It's fine. Hurry! Or are you planning on dying with everyone else? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Sorry, Snake. Let's go. Bully his sister. The three remaining steeled the, the three remaining steeled themselves and stepped through the door. Door five swung shut, closing with the heavy finality of metal upon metal. Junpei and his companions scrambled to the door. Hey! How is it over there? 
you find anything? Please say something, will you? Uh, something's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're okay? June's face showed her concern more plainly than her words ever could. Uh. Uh. Almost as though in response to her question, a voice rang out from the other side of the door. It was Seven. Hey, there it is! That's gotta be that dead thing! Come on, get over here! We gotta authenticate! Hooray! The beeping... Stopped. The sighs of relief were audible even through the heavy door. Phew. Looks like it stopped. Junpei and his companions leaned away from the door and breathed a collective sigh of relief on their own. Hey, guys! Are you doing alright over there? They'd heard Seven's voice, but it wouldn't hurt, to be sure. Yep, we're fine. Despite the recent danger, Clover's voice was as bubbly as ever. Oh, hey, I'm gonna tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? Helpful! The dead is just like the red, but the color is different. You know how the red was red? Have a good dinner! Thanks for hanging out! Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same, too. Uh, blue dab <laughs> Awesome! Thanks! That dab helps a lot. Well, we should probably move on now. You be careful out there. Roger that. Junpei and the others left door 5 and headed toward door 4. Whew. Now it's our turn. I'll go first. They stood in front of the red and placed each of their hands upon it. Four asterisks appeared on the screen. Junpei grabbed the lever and turned down. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's go! None of them looked particularly optimistic, but their faces were set. Junpei nodded to them and turned back toward the red. All right, let's go. With strength and determination, he pulled the lever. Let's go! Run! <laughs> the four of them leapt through the door together. The moment they had passed through it, each heard a cold electronic sound coming from their left wrist. Oh, damn. In the center of each bracelet, a red skull appeared and began to flash. It's counting down. The detonator's countdown had begun. Where do you see the countdown? Well, I mean, I guess you're saying that it is. Anyway, in the long moment that each of them spent staring at their wrists. The numbered door behind them closed, the sound of metal on metal reverberating down the hallway. We can't go back! Gold door. We need to hurry and find the device! Hey! Where the hell is the dead? How would I know? Don't give me that crap! Start looking! I already am! They began to run, eyes looking frantically for the device that was the key to their salvation. The hallway they found themselves running down was a long one, easily 300 feet in length. On the right side of it stood a series of wooden doors, all nearly identical. If they had taken time to think, they would likely have discerned that the doors lead to the cabins. Don't tell me the dead is in one of those rooms. Everybody check a room now! Oh no! How many rooms do you think there are? Junpei was too frightened to count properly, but at his best guess there were seven or eight of them. Ah, uh, fuck! We don't have time to count! Junpei ran to the nearest door. We just need to open them all. He grabbed the knob and shook it hard. It, it won't open. It didn't feel locked. More like someone had hammered an iron plate over the other side of the door. Junpei turned around to find another door and saw that his companions had already run to doors of their own. They did not seem to be having any more success than he had. Their own words confirmed his fears. Shit, this one's so good. Same here. It's not moving! 
June was the last to speak up. Oh. As Junpei looked in her direction, his eye caught something he hadn't noticed before. A small, red, blinking light. There it is! At the end of the hallway! Run! Even as he yelled, he ran. He grabbed Santa, Lotus, and June and pulled them toward the light. All of them? Damn! Santa called out to them as he ran. Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds! I know that, goddammit! I'm asking you how many seconds we have left! In all likelihood, Junpei figured nearly a minute had already passed since the door had closed behind them. If that was true, an urgency foremost in all of their minds, they arrived at the end of the hallway. Oh, look, it's the diamonds! The dead sat on the left wall, blinking and almost tauntingly at them. Hurry! It's the dead! Get over here! Junpei grabbed hold of the machine, his hands slick with sweat and shaking. He slammed his hand against the scanner panel. Come on, everyone! The other three quickly followed suit. With a grunt, Santa yanked the lever downward. We live! Looks like it stopped. <laughs> his hands began. Uh, his hands beginning to steady. Junpei wiped away some of the sweat that had beaded on his forehead. Rule zero. As they caught their breath, the four companions began to look around. <sighs> There's another door at the end of the hallway. He could see a heavy-looking set of double doors. Set into the walls of the hallway on either side of the larger door were two smaller ones. Let's try this one first. And of course it won't open. How many times had he come across similar doors with similar results, he wondered. Or perhaps he corrected himself. More a lack of results. Whatever the reason, the door remained firm and unyielding and refused to allow Junpei or anyone else passage. A keyhole. That is Mars, I believe. Above the keyhole was a small symbol engraved in the brass. What's this mark? It mail? He wasn't quite sure what to make of it, and stared at it for a moment in confusion. It was June that corrected him. No, not exactly. That's probably the symbol of Mars. A Noah Sailor Scouts, yeah! Well, technically, they are the same symbol. But I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. The symbols of the solar system. Oh, th that's right. The sun, Saturn, and Earth. At least that's what I'm assuming. And this time, on this side, four has Mars. Hang on. I actually don't have a pe pencil. But I'm using a unique new method to make sure I remember this session's notes. Uh, I have I have whiteboards on my wall, like I have my desk, and then on the wall I have like whiteboard calendars and stuff. So I'm just gonna one sec focus with my mind. All right, and then I made a note on the wall with my mind. Who's your favorite Sailor Scout? My favorite Sailor Scout. When I was a kid, I really liked Venus. Today, I really like Jupiter and Mercury. I think I always just liked them all. I also love Usagi. I love Sailor Moon. I just love them all. I want to hold them all. Ah. So this isn't the man symbol. It's a symbol for Mars? I think so, yes. I see. Wait, where's Santa? While Junpei and Jun talked, Santa disappeared. They turned to find him some distance down the hallway. He had gone to check the other doors. Eventually, he reached the last of them and jogged back. It took him only a moment to catch his breath again. Yeah, so, I looked the place over. Here's the deal. None of the other doors open. None of them. Then that must mean... 
We only have two more doors. Lotus examined the doors on either side of the larger double door. Each one had a metal plate attached to it. Maybe it's the room number. B92 and B93. Hang on. Let me check my notebook. I want to I want to do I don't think this is anything, but I want to do it for fun just to like test myself cuz I think we talked about um Yeah, okay. So last time, uh during the last route, uh we talked about I forget what it was called, but basically the 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 mathematical thing where uh, numbers also have, or not numbers, letters have, have number equivalents. So, for example, like, 14 equals E. Like, 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 what, what if, if 14 equals E, what would B be? And then what would the digital root of these rooms be? This is just, this is just nonsense I'm doing for, for silly fun. Because, like, well, what, 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 what is it? Uh, E is the fifth letter of the alphabet, and then B is the second letter. So, 14, 13, 12. B would be 11, right? And then A would be 10, like, bit, like yeah, base 10. That's what it was, wasn't it? Because, um, like, cause like, base 10 would be, like, A equals 10, B equals 11, which, uh, uh, 11, 20... 22, uh, and then 20, so it's 22 and 23, which would be 4 and 5. <laughs> wow, just like the last two, just like the last two doors we were at, the doors 4 and 5, wow! <laughs> the door on the left has a B92. Thank you for let, thank you for, for, for coming to my mindless self-indulgence. And the one on the right says B93. All right, let's open them. I'll open B92. Okay, I'll get B93 then. Junpei put his hand on the doorknob, and Santa moved to the other door. They, they'd made it through the numbered door alive. There was nothing more to be afraid of. Junpei and Santa looked at each other and nodded. One, two, three! Here we go. In unison, they pushed against their respective doors. Imagine doing an escape room, but Twitch chat can help you out. You 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 get left like 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 our kit in the beginning also includes like a cell phone that just has the only functionality it has is that it has Twitch chat open, <laughs> but like Twitch can't man like the only the, like they have to keep the line open, but they can't actually find you. Through the, the, the Twitch, like, chat, like, like, hang on, I'm getting hung up on this scenario. I want to focus on puzzles. Promptly found themselves in a new room. I want to be in a new room. June followed Junpei as he threw open his door. They turned around and saw that the door on the other side was open as well. <gasps> oh my god, you opened the door while the... Visual novel open the door and you're here. It's like weird guest therapy. It's like, yeah. it's like the Disney channel thing where everyone's laughing. Like, oh my god, honey. Hi, how you I mean, you're not somebody. Hello. Okay, hi. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yeah, it worked out. Mm hmm. I heard. I'll have to. I'll, I'm probably going to make something when I'm done streaming. Okay. <laughs> Aw, he's doing a little heart. I love you. Bye, honey. Mac and cheese. As a Halloween treat for me. And a trick on, on, on my gut. No, it won't actually hurt me. I'm... I'm I, I I took it so carefully with foods that now I'm at a point where I could I could have a macaroni as a treat. They turned around and saw that the door on the other side was open as well. Ooh. Through the door was another person, his mouth agape. It was Santa. Hey, it opened. Yeah, it did. 
Junpei and Santa looked at each other. I, uh, I didn't expect that. It was so easy. Lotus's calm voice broke into their thoughts. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan. Can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. As she headed for room 93, Lotus continued, Well, now we have these two rooms. I'm sure there's something in there that will help us get out of here. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. You two take the other one. All right. Okay. Oh boy. Ah, stop flashing me. Ah, stop, stop. Curtains. Seek a way out. Seek a gay trout. All right, so we're in room 92 right now. Very, very interesting room. Like we've got, what do we, what do we got in here? We've got like the L couch. We've got like a circle table in the middle and some sort of thing on the side. Lonely vase in the corner. Uh, toilet separate from the shower or is it just a stand, like just a standing shower? That's a big, that's a big standing shower. A big old bed, maybe even a bunk bed. All right, let's take a look. Hmm. Let's see. What's this? Um. I'm trying, like, I feel like I'm going to be asked what this is, like a Rorschach test. And I'm taking a moment to really consider what I see. see and if you know what this is or like if there's supposed to be like a right answer or something don't tell me but like what do you see looks like a person on a raft to you a rabbit I I I I I I looked at it for a bit and I wasn't sure at first but like I locked on to this part in the middle Ooh when I look at it okay wait wait okay I'm looking at it on my main monitor right but when I look to my OBS view and see it smaller I can see it see it even better because like I focused on the middle shape and and I can kind of see like a little dog like like you know like Iggy from from Stardust Crusaders I see one of those little puppy dogs with the little white faces and the black bodies I see a little I see a little puppy this is kind of a weird looking picture do you think it's an abstract painting or something it looks kind of like a demon with an elephant-like nose sucking on a human being's brain. Where the hell did that come from? I see a puppy! What are you seeing? No! <laughs> What's her brain made of? Can't say I'd mind finding out a little more about what goes on in there. It's a kind of weird looking picture. Some, it's some sort of weird black and white design. Look, there looks like there's a room on the right side of this picture. On the right side of the picture. That's my clue. Oh, yeah, I would not have even seen that if I didn't. I, I genuinely would not have seen that if if not for the um if not for for the um for for the for the painting. That's that's funny. Ooh. 
That vase looks expensive. I wonder how much we could get for it. Are you gonna steal it? <laughs> looks like a valuable vase. Empty though. Looks like there's a room to the right of the vase. Let's go. Curtain? That's the bathroom wall. There are square tiles all over it. It's just a shower head. There's nothing special about it. There's a little blue platform protruding from the shower wall next to the knobs. It's for putting soap on. I used a shower once, so I know. Oh, I, I used a shower once. This is a classic trait of all showers. That's the shower knob. Let's see if anything happens when we turn it. No water's coming out. Damn. You see it you see the demon bird with a mosquito nose? Scary! The wall's covered with square tiles. They've all got geometric shapes on them. Like, um. There's certain squares where there's four of a pattern. Like like four four squares and then like four sets of, of two lines. And then it'll suddenly break into like different patterns. Like two of the same pattern, two with uh, matching patterns in horizontal lines, and then two with the same patterns. And then, I don't know if there's really a set pattern to all of this just yet, but maybe I'm overthinking it. Ah, a different perspective. Shower curtains, huh? Let's try closing it. Ooh, we're in the shower. No, I want to look at the wall with the shower closed. Now I can see the full expanse of the shower curtain in all its waterproof glory. There's nothing. Suspicious. It's just a normal old, it's just a normal old shower curtain. A narrow shower and I'm standing in it with June. <gasps> What are we gonna do in the shower? <laughs> this is awkward. Time to open the curtain. Damn. Again? Okay, I'm not allowed to, to, to look at walls with the curtains closed, I guess. A collection of full and partially depleted rolls of toilet paper. Someone was well prepared. There's nothing too suspicious about it. Now let's check the toilet. There's nothing there. The tank's empty too. There's not, there isn't even any water in it. Hmm, trying to take one more look. Uh, yeah. Why don't we go back to the living room? Okay, let's go back. We'll figure out what to do with that later, I guess. Uh, let's actually look around the living room. What's, what's this? Ah, Jumpy, what are you doing? You don't have time to be relaxing on a sofa. Duh. What is, this is a very unique cabinet. It's like, why does it have a ceiling? It's a display case, but there's nothing being displayed. How sad. Looks like the drawers are empty too. But why does the display why does the display case like why why does it have like an awning <laughs> and an L? What's this? Matches! Uh let's let's search the matches. It's a box of matches. There are matches inside, obviously. Well, maybe there's not. Have you checked? <laughs> Junpei looked blankly down at what he was holding, then up at June. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Oh yeah. Yes, I'm fine. June certainly looked fine. Let me see your forehead. Junpei held his hand on her forehead for a few seconds. Oh! Uh. I <laughs> guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? I think it's cute when she gets surprised and her hair just kind of curls upwards. She's like, ah! <laughs> oh! We have to save our game. 
Uh, am I worried about June? Yeah, I am. But I don't know if she wants me to be direct or if she, if she wants me to act all cool and confident. It's been a while, so I'm just gonna say, yeah, I am. I'm worried. Yeah, I, I guess I am. <laughs> she likes it. June blushed and giggled. By the way, Jumpy? Hmm? How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. All right, so if we really quick side side sidebar, um, if we're going with the angle, basing basing like if if we are to assume that this is zero, zero zero does all of their dirty work personally, top grade top grade antagonist, um, if we are to assume this is zero, I think this is a good vote. For zero is shorter than June Pay. <laughs> like this, this is probably shorter than June Pay, right? When you woke up, you were on D deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? Yeah, I'm hiding that I have a big, silly little crush on you, you goober. No, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? I guess it could be perspective. I'd have to look at it more and decide if, if, if it's set up with perspective in mind or if it's just a silly little shot. Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Oh no, wait, why are you- Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, I, I don't know, anything. I mean, you're hiding it, how would I know? You mean like, the number of men I've dated? <laughs> Sit, man, 2009 was, was a wild time. <laughs> Junpei's heart stumbled over itself. Do you want to know? <sighs> he had to admit, he was a little curious. Don't worry. She smiled at him. Only 18. Huh? <sighs> Time zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. June looked a little embarrassed and scratched the back of her head in a desperate attempt to seem nonchalant. Oh, yeah, I, I, I see. Junpei coughed quietly in much the same way. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-Deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean... Why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. June, June, have you ever been? Ha June, I know this is this might be a uh, uh, invasive. Uh, this this is a pretty invasive uh, question. Uh, but have you ever been kidnapped as a kid? <laughs> June nodded, and for a few moments she had the fa faraway look of someone in deep thought. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. Oh, um... Well, if it had something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal? Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. No, oh, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. Junpei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant. Ah, sorry, I read that really weird. Redo! Junpei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant and confused. 
Elementary school. Elementary school. Was there anything strange that had happened in elementary school? Yeah. The bunny killing. Whoa! <laughs> what, a, what a thing to say as a raid comes in. Hi! <laughs> Ivy, how are you? Thank you for the raid. I give y'all a shout out really quick. What were y'all up to? I hope you're having a happy Halloween as well. Really? Folks, welcome on in. My name is Katie Dids. You can call me Katie. Currently, I'm playing the Nonary game, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. I'm playing the original uh, on the on the PC port. This is a very mature game. Hit the extra support CW if you want a list of warnings and general content advisories. But we're just hanging out playing this dark, grim visual novel where a dude exploded. This is, I've done one ending before. This is the second time through. So if you've never played this game and want to, uh, be warned. Because it's a, it's a lot. Hi, 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 hi. That is true. Yes, um, right now, uh, we're, we're hanging out with our childhood friend after everybody has been kidnapped and trying to figure out what we all have in common as kidnappees. And he, in this moment, he's trying to remember what happened in elementary school, but we know from the last run we did that in elementary school, s people showed up to their school and killed all of their pet rabbits in like the bunny hutches. As he searched the room, he continued to rack his brain. And, 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 and so we shall return to our puzzle. Well, welcome on in. If y'all gotta get going because it's getting late, feel free to break off as you see fit. But thanks for stopping by. Let's see. Have I checked everything in this room? It's a round wooden table. Is this the way out? No, this is the way into the bedroom. What's this? This isn't a painting. Oh, it's the ship. It's the map. It's the ship map. It, is it a map? It looks like a map of the ship's interior. Oh, this is a great find. Yes, get dinner. Uh, and thank you so much. Uh, thank you again for the raid. Uh, I think it'll be really useful. Let's take it with us. It is now possible to use the map. Hooray! Junpei took one last look at the map, then folded it up and slid it back into his pocket. June looked up as he closed it. <sighs> this ship is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. It's a retro. It's a gigantic, the Titanic the clone. Do you remember what Zero said? Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Junpei took a moment to look around the room. Hmm. A vanity. Do you think this boat is... A I don't think it's the actual Titanic. It's a replica, a replica I assume. A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Like a sister ship. I mean, it is supposed to be the model of the sister ship, isn't it? Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. June. June. Listen, I know right now you're from, you're, you, you've been made and have been sent to me from the year 2009. You don't know how bad it gets, okay? No way. Do you even know how much money that would take? June, you don't know how bad it gets. <laughs> no idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Plus, 
there's no way. Also, rolling it back to real realistic reasoning, the the real reason is there's no way that they could retrieve the real Titanic. There, the real Titanic is down there for a reason. It's really dangerous. Really dangerous to go there. Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Exactly. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Yeah, it would probably also fall apart on the way up. Like it wouldn't be, it would, it, it wouldn't be worth it. Leave the Titanic alone! Shouting for the rooftops, leave it alone! Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? June, you don't know how bad it gets. <laughs> that's 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 the phrase for the stream. June, you don't know how bad it gets. <laughs> It's the site of the worst accident in history. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. I shouldn't be laughing. It's just so awful, you know? A curse, huh? <laughs> Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know curses and stuff uh well okay so it's like for me personally i don't actually believe in like curses and things in the sense of of like i put a spell on you <laughs> who was that <laughs> um I mean, you know, I am a witch, but like, there, there, like, like there, there's like, you know, a certain, like, I am superstitious, so I feel like in this case, I'd say I do. Yeah, well, um, I, I guess so, I, to a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain extent. Like, like here's the best way I could describe it. One time, when I was, when I was, um, when I was still in school, we stayed overnight because we. We had to stay we had to stay late to clean up like chairs and things because we had like a, a like a a magical show choir like like dinner type show for for school and and it and it was like you know a dinner thing so we had to stay late to clean up and you know schools at night get the rep for being haunted and stuff so people you know they they yeah leave the titanic alone good raid phrase very good um but, but, um, 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 I'm trying to think where, where was I? Right. You know, they're acting all scared and stuff. Meanwhile, like I, like I'll be the most scared person there, but I'll be the one turning on the lights because what's like, you know, if I'm scared, I should just make it so I won't be scared. And they're saying they're scared of me for being like not scared, but I'm just putting on a brave face and just doing my best like Luigi does. And that's that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I don't think a ghost will actually come out and kill me, but I do. I I will not deny that I just naturally feel scared anyway. Junpei scratched his temple. Uh, what about you? No, nah, I I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes, I do believe in curses. Yeah, right. Like, e like whether like whether curses are real or not, I'm not gonna go out of my way to, like, disrespect tradition or, or like, break a curse on purpose because yeah, it's not real. But, like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be the, the horror movie gets killed so quick for playing around <laughs> type guy. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. I think a curse sunk the Titanic! <laughs> I simply think they were all cursed. <laughs> what? They were cursed to sink. A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Huh? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this, is this, hey gang, is this what they call a Ushikoshi moment? Is this, <laughs> like, I feel like we've had a couple of those, but, but right now I'm like, oh, this one. <laughs> this is a Ushikoshi moment. 
Junpei couldn't understand how Jun had maintained a straight face to say that. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amin-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. This mummy has baggage. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. I've got one even better for you, June. Have you ever heard of the Man of Medan? <laughs> the, the, the Man of Medan. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Uh, haven't you ever heard that one? And the Manchurian gold will roll out of the caskets like fart gas after being struck by lightning. So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! June's eyes had lit up with excitement, like a child with a new toy. That mummy, the priestess, supposedly, she was special. What do you mean? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, it's that thing. I uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax? Yeah? Wax. The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And... Yes, yeah, saponification. But that's not what it was. So, yeah, yeah, we've all heard of saponification. We're not about that anymore. Listen. <laughs> huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. What? They're frozen? Let it. That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. That's crazy. <laughs> I think so too, but maybe it's true and we just didn't know about it before. I didn't know? Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. Mm. Huh? Th nah, that seems too silly to be true. But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. Kane, this this is a dangerous this is a dangerous way of thinking you've stumbled upon here. I just want you to be aware. You're one you're one step away from flat earth. <laughs> well, yeah, um What if we simply didn't know? <laughs> Jun and Junpei talked a little more, and then went back to their investigation. But even as they did, his mind went back to what she told him. Ice that doesn't melt, even in the desert? Does, does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm. The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt. Like he'd eaten his ice cream too fast. I wish I had ice cream. Ah, oh, dang it! <laughs> the 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 the. Now that it's getting close to my usual end time, I'm getting like the hungry vibes. It's a bottle with water in it. This is a bedroom. They probably have it here because your throat always feels dry when you wake up. You know, my throat's dry, but I think that's because I'm a little nervous right now. Well, we did run a lot, so we're kind of sweaty. Hey, jumpy. Did you want to take a shower together? Whoa! <laughs> Just kidding. Too late to take it back. No take backsies. My brain's already working out the picture. My throat was dry already. This isn't. This sure isn't helping. Is it stale water? I doubt it'll be that useful. I wish it was drinkable. What kind of bed is this? It's a light blue blanket with some designs on it. 
someone's made the bed, or at least never unmade it. There's only bed sheets under the blanket. Nothing uh, exciting. Pillows? Look, there's two pillows right next to each other. Guess it's a double. Huh? What's up? You're turning red. Oh man, is her fever back? Hey, are you alright? Do you need to lay down for a minute? I I'm fine. I think it's still a little early for that. Huh? Hey, seriously, are you really okay? June, calm down! <laughs> Spritzer with the water bottle. Stop it! <laughs> a bed frame. Now we don't have to worry about falling off. I toss and turn and I sleep. She's blushing again. What the hell is she thinking about? Anything under the bed? No. Bed frame. Dang. A wooden cupboard. There are cups inside, surprising no one. I don't know. I'm not used to having cups by the bed. Ooh, a key in the drawer. Dresser key. A key. Do you think it's the key to the dresser? What dresser? There's nothing inside. This is the mirror for the dresser. And now she's playing with her hair. Does she even realize she's doing that? Hey. We don't have time for that. Come on, it's not like there's anyone here you, you need to impress. Yes, there is. Who? What? What? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? Uh, forget it, Jumpy. It's you. It's you. It's a light. Thanks to it, we can see. Oh, wait. Um. Chair. A chair that goes with the dresser. There's nothing particularly interesting about it. Damn it. Okay. Hmm. Akane is not a flat earther. She is into conspiracy theories so esoteric only she knows about them. Get on her level. <laughs> There's nothing in the display case. Uh, so this is not the dresser. So? Which one's the dresser? Is it in here? Jumpy, where are you going? Um, I was thinking of going over to Lotus's room. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm just gonna go check up on them. Is there something wrong with that? Oh, well, no. Come back soon. Sure thing. I'll leave the rest to you. Sure. Leave it to me. All right, off to the other room. Oh. Huh? There's a square tile in this frame. It's glued in there quite well. I don't think you can take it out. Is it just the same one as before? Oh, it's... Looks like a valuable vase. Empty, though. There seems to be a room on the left side of the vase. Is this just the same room? Oh. This is the bathroom wall. The whole wall is covered in these squares, tiles. These square tiles, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's... Well, this one doesn't have a curtain. This room doesn't have a shower curtain. This room? Well, um, there were shower curtains in the bathroom that June was checking out. But you're saying this bathroom doesn't have any. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. There's probably a reason why. I see. I see, I see, I see. Is there anything in the toilet? Guess not. The tank's empty too. Some toilet paper. We've got two rolls, I guess. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we'll just have to spot the difference. Whoa. Dang, you got lots of stuff on display here. Well, this is a display case. Check it out. These plates and shit look really expensive. You wanna take a look? Well, there's one of the... this tile. I think I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, I know. Kinda looks like the one we saw in the other room. Damn, guess this is the wrong key. Well, that means there's gotta be another one somewhere around here. Otherwise, we aren't gonna be able to open this thing. Where would the other key be? I don't know, there's lots of interesting things. Let's use matches on the candle. Candle with a candlestick. This might come in handy. 
Oh. We can combine. I know. If I use these matches to light the candle. My candle! Happy Halloween! I'm walking down the hall with my candlestick! Ooh! <laughs> awesome. With the light from the candle, maybe we can take a look around over there. But it gets so hot when I hold it. I want to put it down. Well, why don't you set it on top of the dresser? It's a, it's flat there. At least it won't fall over. Oh yeah, good idea. Is it that hot? Hey, it got pretty bright. Now we can take a look around a little, or we can we, we can look around a little. Item. Let's see if this. Yes, it worked. A plate. It's the one with the dog face. It's a little face in the corner in the bottom. Alright, that's it for the drawer, I guess. Um anything ooh. Scary. There's a picture of an old cruise ship. Is it the Titanic? Hey, Junpei. It's a cupboard. There's a freaking cupboard in here. Are you all right? Oh, don't give me that. Come on. A cupboard in a bedroom can only mean there's a safe in here. Really? Damn, there's nothing in here. Got me all worked up for nothing. Right, there was a safe a while back, but I don't remember if we did anything with it. And it wasn't in this room either. It's a light. What'd you expect? Can't really tell if it's burned out or not, though. That doesn't matter anymore. The light from the candle should let us search the room. A bottle full of water. I don't think we're gonna need this for anything. What about the bed? Oh, a shower curtain! Hooray! Anything under the blanket? Nope. Nothing suspicious here. Two pillows in a pile. Oh! A pile of pillows. Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? Hey, calm down. Boob joke. Anything under the blanket? Girl with burning red eyes stares back at me. No, Halloween! Ah! I'm just messing with. I'm just messing with you. There's nothing there. Oh, happy Halloween! Huh? Hey, what the hell? It just got dark all of a sudden. No, the scaries are happening! Maybe the candle got blown out? Maybe we should go see. Or... Oh. Damn, that candle evaporated! There's a candlestick covered in melted wax on top of the dresser. Hey, what's this? The top of the candlestick looks kind of weird. You're right. It's all bumpy. Whoa! It's a key! I think, right? Let's see if this candlestick key will do anything. Yes! It opened! All right, pull that shit open. Give me. I'm trying to remember what this part was. Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? What's up? Santa had shown up out of nowhere and gave Junpei no small start. Hmm? Here, take this. Santa pulled something out of his pocket. A bookmark? A clover! It looked like a bookmark. It had a four-leaf clover in it. What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? Santa gave him a wry smile. <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? Oh. I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Uh... Hey! 
have we talked about this before? I don't... I, f I, feel, I feel like I've heard this before, but I don't remember if it was from this game or not. Hmm. Maybe I'll look back at the VODs and see. Haha, <laughs> top it, boy. <laughs> Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but... Junpei tried to figure out how best to phrase what he wanted to say. What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Santa scratched the back of his ear and looked awkward. Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? Hi, Story! How are you? Yeah, his name's Santa. The reason he did it is, quote, Do any of you chumps know Japanese? <laughs> Well, San means three, and he's Santa, like white hair Santa Claus. But but it's but it ain't it ain't Christmas. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. And that meaning is pretty much those four words. Each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, and that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well. I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Leaf words. Junpei looked at the bookmark. Hope, faith, love, and luck. So what you're trying to tell me is you don't like four-leaf clovers and what they represent specifically. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Santa pretended to shiver with disgust and shoved the bookmark into Junpei's confused hands. Here. What do you want to do? I'll... Oh, man. Hmm... What do I want to do? Dang, I feel like in the pre- like when we went to door number five, I don't- we didn't have this many moments where we're making like choices. This time I'm like, ooh, we're making choices. <laughs> um... I mean, maybe if you don't want it, maybe I could give it to- ooh, wait! Okay, so in the first route, I I left Clover alone when she ran off, but what if I take this bookmark and then I give it to Clover when I go talk to her? That might be fun. I want to take it. After all, why shouldn't he? Alright, sure. <laughs> I'll take it. He shoved the thing into his pocket and gave Santa... A last confused look. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. What had happened to Santa? Junpei wondered. How had he become such a bitter person? Well, in the last route, we wound up hanging out with him, and he did mention uh, uh, reasons, like reasons places might need a thermostat, like a sauna or a boiler, <laughs> or like a or like a a, 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 a what was it? Not a boiler, like a th furnace. For a moment, they looked at each other. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. Oh, oh, you're, okay, so you're like how I was earlier when I was suspicious of clover because of the meaning behind, like, like because you know Japanese, you also know that four sounds really similar to, to death. What, worried about the four horsemen? 
Nah, come on, man. That's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages, that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. And I'm afraid of double meanings. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-ass number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. You, what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... Santa's explanation made no sense. I can kind of see where he's coming from, but it is kind of like one of those moments where, like, I get it, but also, why would you ever think like this? Junpei was even more confused than before. You play? Play? Like gambling or the stock market? Um, I don't expect this dude to be into stocks. If this man is into stocks, I'm gonna lose it. I'm going to assume gambling. Like gambling? Like a game? You mean like gambling? Uh, yeah, of course. What else would I mean? Um, uh... The stock market, I guess. Which, Junpei, what, do you, what did you think that for? In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand. But the lowest, most worthless cards, zeros. They call Monkey. Just like the guy in charge of this game, huh? <laughs> Zero's a monkey. Santa blinked, <sighs> utterly stunned. <laughs> <laughs> He's now he is like, whoa, what? what? Then he began to laugh. <laughs> oh, oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here sure is one hell of a monkey. That was when Lotus spoke up. You know, if you think about it, the Nonary game is really a lot like Baccarat. Apparently, she'd been listening. Of course, it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root junk. You just drop the tens digit, and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh, yeah, I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. No. The person who makes nine wins? Wait, did you forget already? Don't you remember what Zero said? It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. So, if we want to get off this boat, we have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. And only the people in that team are going to make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the Nonary Game. What? Huh? You don't know. Nonary means something derived from nine or base nine. Ah, uh, base nine. It's derived from the Latin prefix nona, which means nine. While we're at it, the prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with one horn. Two is bi, like binary. I, man. I, I forgot, for one second, I forgot that this game was made in 2009 and I was gonna get so excited, like, two is bi, like, bisexual, woo! <laughs> Binary means composed of two parts. Three is tri, I'm sure you've heard that one plenty. Like trio, triple, and triangle. You get the idea. After that, you have quart, quinty, sext, septum, and so on. And of course the prefix for eight is octo, like octopus. It's called that because it has eight legs. Get it? I see. Oh, Santa's bisexual? Woo! Bye rep, bye rep, bye rep! So that's, that's both Junpei and Santa. 
confirmed, right? Based off of what we talked about last time too, I think. So then Nona means nine. Wasn't, wasn't one of the kids also named Nona? I just realized someone in a way named their kid nine. So, how many of us are trapped on this ship? That'd be nine. What, now, when you say Snake was made gay via Twitter poll, what does that mean? Like, was there like an official Twitter poll? And then, like, 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 Ushikoshi's like, gang, what do you think? And then everyone said, gay. And then Ushikoshi said, all right, approved. <laughs> and, then, and then gave Snake the gay flag. <laughs> Because that would be epic. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? Pretty much exactly that. Really? That is that is actually epic. That's really cool. They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours did we have? Zero said nine hours. And finally, to get out of this ship. We need to find the door with a nine that's hidden somewhere in the ship by making a team with the digital root of nine. <sighs> sorry, I just kind of, sorry, I just kind of had a moment where a brief, a, like I was looking at Lotus for a moment and then like just a brief flash entered my brain and it said code Lyoko and I like I keep like seeing it for a brief second and then I'm like no no stop it's not it's not that big her forehead's not that big stop <laughs> Ooh, hydrate stretch that's a good call one sec <sighs> okay Hey, why was this auto modded? Hang on, sorry. Sleep. Okay. What happened is that Ushikoshi retweeted a horny art of a character from the second game. As a result, one Twitter user user started the hashtag Snake is Gay. It got very popular, and then Ushikoshi made a poll called Is Snake Gay? The options were yes, no, what, and I will support you no matter what. <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> That's cool. That's wild. What a what a wild ride. I can understand why why Ushikoshi has a, a, a strong dedicated fan base. Lotus nodded again. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the Nonary game. Somewhere, far away, Junpei heard the creak of stressed metal. It sounded almost like Zero laughing at them. Or the sad, desperate scream of a pig headed to the slaughterhouse. Jeez. It's not that dire. Whoa. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, check this out. This is a pretty nice sofa. I know. It's a shame I can't take it back with me. You'd want this from this ship? Are you sure? Uh, let's put... This one was here, right? Hey, Junpei, that tile you've got. You think maybe you're supposed to put it in one of those empty spaces? I mean, the pattern does look kind of the same, doesn't it? He's right. I think so, too. But if that's the case, you're going to need to collect all three of the tiles, right? Don't, think you, uh, don't you think we should collect all of them before you start putting them in? All right. We gotta figure out where that other tile is. Let's see, what do I have? The curtain. Let's go to the room on the left. And then if we put up this shower curtain, there's a curtain rod running along the ceiling. Let's put that shower curtain on those hooks. Then close it, spreading the curtains. A hole! Wow, that's a pretty obvious peephole. Somebody's really dedicated. Well, with a hole this big, you gotta wonder 
may if maybe they wanted to be caught. Ew! So you're saying maybe the one getting spied on was in that into that shit? Maybe they were into like those home invasion fantasies. Home invasion? Interesting. I see. You two are real idiots. You know that? Yucky. Now close it. Ah. Okay. Well. Uh. Ugh. Can I? There's gotta, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a way. It's a wall covered in small square tiles. Oh, no, wait, I see the curtain there. They've got geometric shapes on them. Let's try spraying the curtains. Okay. I couldn't tell if I was in or out of the shower. There's a hole in the curtain. If I look at it from a ways back, I can see a single tile. All right, from here I can see what tile it is. Looks like it's... Fifth from the top and third from the right. Fifth from the top, third from the right. Let's remember. Fifth from the top. What's up? You're going back already? Fifth from the top, third from the right. Well, I can't just leave June there by herself. Fifth from the top, third from the right. Hmm. What, you think you're her knight? Uh, you, you think you're her knight or, or her protector or something? Fifth from the top, third from the right. You're creeping me out. Whatever, man. I'm going. Fifth from the top, third from the right. Fifth from the top. Third from the right. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Here it is. Yes, this one's loose. I think I can get under this with my nails and yes. The plate! Aw, you. All right, let's go back. While I'm here, I'm just gonna look at my tiles because I have this one, which, this one's in the top left, and then this one's in the bottom right. This one's in the top right, okay. The exit. Lotus and Santa are in the room on the other side. I'm gonna go check up on them. Let's do it. There's a tile in the frame. So I guess I'm supposed to put the tiles in the empty spaces. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh no, why would you do it this way? <laughs> I had already figured it out, I did it. <laughs> I would simply not do it like this. <laughs> oh, Junpei, why did you stir them all up like that? Oh, okay. All right. And then... There. I found the puppy. Yes! I did it. There. Picture complete. And there goes the frame. What's this? What do you mean, what's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a hole in the wall. Like a hidden safe or something, you know? Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. The Mars key! Junpei messed around a bit with the key he had and looked blankly at the picture that slid down. What's the deal with this picture anyway? Santa had only been mumbling to himself, but drew Lotus it drew Lotus's attention. She looked at the picture and paused. I I think I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Oh no, we're going into the fields! <laughs> Look out! <laughs> there is really funny optional dialogue coming up. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. 
Santa put his hands on his head, as though he were in great pain. Lotus merely arched an eyebrow in his direction and continued. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Fun fact, the son of the aforementioned Sheldrake is a musician named Cosmo Sheldrake. Ooh, that's a really cool name. That's awesome. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? Lotus did not look pleased. All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Oh man, talking about telepathy and stuff, and I'm just like I'm just thinking like like is this does this have to do with the kids? Yes, telepathy. Well perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it's close enough for a simple approximation. Santa suddenly burst into laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Telepathy? Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. Lotus's response was surprisingly curt. Junpei had expected at least some conflict. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Um... I just think it's neat, she says, gently ghosting her fingers over the, fr the frame. <sighs> anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Lotus indicated the picture they'd all been looking at. After a moment, she walked up to the strange picture, examined it, and then spoke. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? Santa answered first. What do you mean? Isn't it just like abstract or something like that? It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's it. What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... A man's face, butterfly, koi, a dog, small boat floating in a lake. Wooden urine, wooden... Two bears high-fiving. Wooden <laughs> urine pa. Funya, funya rin pa. Fun Yarinpa. Like fun is in fun. Ya and and ya. Reen food. Oh, oh, it was food. Fun Fun I'm assuming Fun Yarinpa is the funny dialogue option. Hang on. Load? I'm trying to think of how I could load. Hmm. Because I want to answer dog, but I also want to see funny. Hmm. Funyuns, it's a nonsense word. I want to answer dog. Cause, cause, because we can always come back, right? I'll come back for, I'll come back for Funyaripa. Don't let me forget, but I'm gonna answer dog. Maybe uh, a dog. Cause it's a little nose in the middle, a little white spot. No, see, you got the, you got the head here and then these are the front paws and then these are the back paws. Oh, he sees the paws. I can see the paws, like the little legs. Junpei traced the black contours. Whoa! Dog! 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 See? Dog moment! Unyurimpa was the joke that came into the Japanese dialogue. Ah! Ah! That's cool! Oh, I see it. 
I guess you've got a point. Santa, despite his constant aloofness, was clearly impressed. Junpei glanced over at Lotus. She looked stunned. How did you know? You're right. What? Wait! <laughs> there, that's an actual... Wait, I thought it was just like a Rorschach test. That's an actual, like... That, that's like an actual problem? I found dog and it, I was right. I'm good at images. Being artist works. <laughs> that's, 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 that's my only like thing I could think of, right? It's just like pattern recognition, being able to, to specifically recognize Iggy from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. The breed of dog that, that that is. I didn't think you would have been able to guess that. For a brief moment, Junpei felt a swell of pride. I'm proud. I'm a proud moment. So? So what do I win? <laughs> Maybe we can roar shark with the right answer, right? <laughs> I, I got this one right. That's crazy. What? <laughs> Now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. I think all the other answers, they'd be like, Junpei, you're just making a shinna. <laughs> Lotus nodded and began to speak. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier. Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts of the world outside the reach of British airwaves. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, Etc. Oh yeah, I can I can see her. I can see the woman in the hat. Can y'all see her? Then in each country they gathered a number of test subjects, roughly a thousand people. They were shown the two pictures and asked, what does this picture look like to you? The results weren't really interesting on their own. 9.2% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they aired a new program on their show. During the 30-minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, it was a safe bet that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog picture was at least that many. After another two days passed, they gathered more research subjects from areas outside the reach of British TV and radio. This time, they only found a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same tests and the same two pictures. The results were startling. 10% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. The previous test sat at a 9.2% success rate. Not much of a change statistically. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find the dog, it went from 3.9% to 6.8%, a very significant increase. So, hypothetically, in this case, you could... So, in my case, you could say, because more people have played and streamed the Nonary games, because I'm playing this for the first time and I got the dog, I, 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 I am the increased statistic that is a mystery. <laughs> so, do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain and couldn't have seen it. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? 
Though I guess in my case, I was also told ahead of time that the woman in the hat was a woman in a hat, and I wasn't given a chance to solve that one. So who's to say? It's all fun and games. Lotus looked back and forth from Junpei to Santa and back again. Normally calm and collected, she looked now as though she were very nearly possessed, and there was something manic about her manner. Santa took an involuntary step backward. Junpei didn't budge and stared straight back into Lotus's eyes. Oh, wait, does this have something to do with that field? Or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? A field not visible to the eye. So, if more people know the answer, then that information will pass through the field. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Psych! Her manner suddenly shifted, and Lotus smiled broadly at Junpei at Santa. She waved her hands dismissively, doing her best to laugh the whole confrontation off. <laughs> I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station, after all. At last, it seemed that Santa had gained control of his composure. Composure? Composure. Rule zero. Right! <laughs> Man, I gotta admit, you had me there for a minute. I, uh, really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. Uh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> Santa and Lotus laughed and gave one another jovial claps on the shoulder. Boy, howdy! This the this sure this sure has 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 taken a turn in tone after the body explosion, huh? <laughs> Junpei, however, didn't feel so much like laughing. Something felt wrong, unclear. All right, enough nonsense. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. Word. Lotus and Santa walked away from the picture, but Junpei stayed, staring at the picture of the dog. Huh. A field not visible to the naked eye. The fields... Morphogenetic field. That's the main thing as a not knower that I picked up from people talking about uh Ushikoshi's games, the fields. Um like I I I, I came in here with like the basic like idea that information passing pass information passes through the fields. But with this context, I think I can I can understand it from like, because also, like, in from the context of, like, playing bits again for, for different dialogue, like, because you have more information. Like, I have information from events that will not happen in this timeline, but because those, but because it, the, the, because those end results have been observed, I can know them. Well, let me rephrase this. I can... I can use this morphic genetic field theory to uh, symbolize save slots and, and time charts and time flows in a novel game, perhaps. That's kind of how I'm understanding this. The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt. But also remember, this is pre-Undertale. I've got a post-Undertale brain looking at this. <laughs> Which is why I sound a bit silly. All right, let's go to the hallway. I'll get June. You guys head to the door. Okay, Roger that. Copy that. You don't have any reason to go back to. The <laughs> okay, come on. Yes, it unlocked. Good job, Junpei. Good. Now we can get going. Come on. What are you guys standing around for? Let's get out of here. Come on, Jumpy, let's go. All right, let's go. Woo! 
Are we actually just out in... Like, we're not all the way in that one area, right? They step through the door to find themselves in a wide hallway. Hold on. I want to save... Err... Uh, ah! I see, I see. Eh. I can go back to that room in the flow. Couldn't I? Because also- Yeah, 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 wait. Don't panic. Everything will be okay. Don't return in the tile screen, though. I want to see the flow. All right, so I'm right here. So there should be another escape room. They step through the door to find themselves in a wide hallway. Ah, another hallway. Junpei, June, Lotus, and Santa stopped for a moment and looked at their surroundings. Oh. Oh, over there is the, is the, hang on, let me get my notes. I know, I know where we are because when we solve the first puzzle for the five door, we're just in the, that middle hallway. Uh, I think it's the Jupiter gate, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see. There's a Venus key. I write down. Stuff and things. Ivan door B deck Venus gate. That's the Venus gate over there, not Jupiter. Venus. We find Jupiter later, though. Oh right, the f the party who went through four eventually found the the Jupiter key or something. That's why I'm getting mixed up. But Venus is over there, that white gate. A short distance away, a metal grate extended across the width of the hallway. Come on, open! It's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. Damn it! They took hold and shook, but it refused to move. Look over here! Nearby was a pair of elevators. Elevators. And the buttons? Of course they don't work. The power must be out here, too, just like by the staircase. That leaves this door. Oh. I'm actually kind of surprised to just see a wood grain door here. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. Just a whole wood texture. Yeah. Sure does. Well then, let's open it. All right, here I go. Junpei grabbed hold of the knob and qu quietly pushed the door open. Oh, a kitchen? He entered slowly, trying to take in as much of his surroundings as he could. The others followed shortly. Oh, so it's a kitchen. Santa did not look pleased. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit? I was hoping this would be the way out of here. <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. As they talked, Lotus headed deeper into the room. Until at last she stood in front of a door. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Hmm. Oh, did I skip his dialogue? But don't we need a key for that? <sighs> no good. Sorry, I guess that wasn't very constructive. Wh what? Neither Junpei nor Lotus looked terribly happy. I don't know why the tubs were- Anyway, uh, let's take a anyway. look. Anyway. Seiko Gay Trout. Junpei dug the ship map from his pocket and spread it out in front of him. As he did. Hey. What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. Yeah, you know what, Junpei? That's kind of important to tell them. I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the B-Deck. Jesus, before Junpei could finish, Lotus snatched the map away from him. Let me see that. She ran her fingers across it, muttering to herself. I knew it. See? Look. Yes, yes, hold your horses. Junpei did as he was told. What did you figure out? Santa and June moved over to look at the map as, well, 
This is handy. See? We came in here. Now if we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. With her finger, Lotus traced a path on the map. How about that? She's right. We can get out through there. There we go. Here, you can have it back. Satisfied that she had been correct, Lotus folded the map and handed it back to Junpei. Thanks. He took it and slid the valuable piece of paper back into his pocket. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. And that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? That seems the most likely. All right, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Scooby-Doo! What's a Scooby-Doo? Okay. We're coming after you. Oh. Okay, yeah, no! Where did he go? He was the... Okay, so, context. Um... I'm used to seeing that, but this time when we started the game, I saw Junpei's eyes at first in the first puzzle room before we skipped it. But now, like, his eyes aren't there, and I'm like, where's his eyes? Why do... Am I not allowed? <laughs> anyway, let's take a look around. A voucher. It says... Appetizer. Nine. Meat dish. Ten. Soup. A. Seafood dish. F. Huh? Is this... Is this more letter stuff? Right, base nine. That's it's not base ten, it's base nine. If 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 it was base ten, then A would be eleven. But because it's base nine, you go up to nine, and then A is ten. So So in a way it's nine, ten, ten, and then we wrote I mean I'm assuming. I could also just be completely wrong. But if E is fourteen, then that would be fifteen. Hmm. My pencil! I thought I lost it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I can write. I can write with my pencil this time. Okay, let me write down. App 9. Meat. 10. Soup. A. C. F. I'm not going to immediately write down the... written down. Now let's look at these plates. Those nine plates look pretty expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well excuse- Hey! Well excuse me, princess. Dang, they were- they were- they were on that Zelda- that ze that Zelda ma mindset when localizing. Uh, one, two, three, there's ten of them. If you flip these over, they look like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. They're soup plates. Okay, so then a if A equals ten, then that's correct. There's ten soup plates. And then there's fifteen of, of the seafood plates. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. What makes you think a poor college student has that has that has has the money to do something like that? Listen, a nice dinner out doesn't al always have to be the most expensive you can buy. That's all. That's what I'm saying. Just get a nice meal. Get, get something you like. Ugh. Also, give me a second to like clear my throat. Ugh. I've been talking a lot. I was fumbling about for juice for a second, and I found my juice. Ah, okay. All set. And yes, there's 15! I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the hell can you tell that? They look just like any other plate from the 99 cent store. If you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. I feel sorry for June. What? Why the hell are you bringing up June? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. You are not terribly subtle. What? It, wait, is that even the right usage of that phrase? Hmm. 
Now I'm just genuinely curious. I feel like they're just wanting to say ref references. It's a line from the play Hamlet by Will William Shakespeare. Excessive to be believed. Okay. Okay, now I understand that phrase. I learned something. It just simply means he's protesting too much. There's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Those plates are for serving meat. Ugh. You really are ignorant, aren't you? Come on, it's not like I need to know this crap. Jeez. I suppose so. I never really understood needing to know all the dishes and stuff. A countertop. We've got a rolling pin and a colander. Nothing useful, in other words. You could bludgeon someone! There are weapons in here. That's the exit. There's a big old iron plate over the door. I don't think we can open it. It's this one, then. Hey, Santa. Could you open that door, please? What the hell? There's no way I could open that thing. Guess you're guess you're getting to that age where your eyes start to go, huh? You'd better watch your mouth, boy, or someone won't live long enough to see that door opened. This has got the two of them on edge. We gotta get out of here and fast. Why are you fighting? Why are you fighting? It's a tank with a pipe coming out of it. Nothing really that special about it. I don't know, I just wanna know what it is. What is it? It's a lot of notes. They've got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Hmm. So I'm gonna move my microphone. Beep. What's this? Wow. This pot looks like it's made out of silver. I bet drinking tea from this pot would be really yummy. Spending a day off with June drinking tea. Could such a thing ever happen for me? Could such a day ever happen for me? Jumpy? Oh, nothing. We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Well, it's good to have water. What's this? A door. There's a bolt keeping us from opening it. It's a bolt. And it's really rusty. Will this even open? We won't know till we try. Let's give it a shot. All right, let's see if you're gonna come out. Damn, no dice. Why did I say damn like that? Damn. <laughs> Good night, have a wonderful, have a wonderful sleep. Thanks for hanging out, Jay. Cheese. Oh, little, little sprite back there for my cheese. Hey, there's something behind the cheese. You're right. Why don't we move some of the cheese? Don't mind if I do. Alright guys, time to move it. June and I need to look behind you. There's a little green bottle back there. Bottle of oil! Oil. Oh look, cooking oil! You could probably use this to make something slippery. We gotta make, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, the, 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 the lock. Oh, cans. There's so much stuff in here. A whole lot of cans. This is probably a pantry. It looks like some kind of large tin container. Well, it's empty. There's milk in here. Milk in an iron barrel. Judging by the rust, it's probably really old. Maybe we shouldn't open it up. I don't think it'd be a pretty sight. Do not open it, you will die. It will be so disgusting. A knife! A rusty knife? I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. The knife seemed important, Junpei thought, but it wasn't going to be much use the way it was. I wonder then if the knife came from here. You, I feel like if you want to kill someone, you can't go wrong with a rusty knife. You know? Fetness. It's futile. Awesome things to say when I'm looking at a knife. Futile.
You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Oh. Um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. Huh? She wasn't making much sense. Junpei tried rephrasing his question. Why were you thinking about futility? At last, she answered. Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The, the curse. The curse of the Titanic. Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Uh... No, I haven't. No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. Wow. Hmm. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. Welcome back. Uh, how was dinner? There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. Nah, she's, she, she, well, yes. Why'd I say nah? <laughs> Why'd I say nah as if she's not talking about it? Sorry, ex don't mind me. I'm gonna stay quiet and let her talk more. <laughs> In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Ah, it was a little too al dente. At least it's so good. That's yummy. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but... I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Ships were just running into those puppies all damn day! <laughs> Right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But, what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you... Are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. But Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. Come on, that's totally different. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. Hmm. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. Oh. Hmm. What are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Huh? Okay, what? So, okay, wait. So what she's saying is 
that that the person who died on the Titanic prophesized, like, quote-unquote prophesized, but just saw exactly what was going to happen and then wrote it down. And because he saw it happen, but somehow is able to send the information backwards, if 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 we're playing in the space, right? I'm going to I'm going to observe Ushikoshi's toys on the 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 carpeted mat before me, and I'm going to play in the space. So if we go along with morphogenetic fields, uh, the future stead saw like saw and observed what was happening on the Titanic and sent that information backwards through time to write it down, is what she's trying to say. Which, if we take that hand in hand with what we were talking about earlier in the stream, doing theory crafting nonsense and reviewing the plot, like figuring out how Zero could plan things so specifically, like Zero sent what would happen to the past, but then but it, we're, we are on the brink of time, tr time travel and closed loops. Time travel that exists purely to satisfy a, a specific condition, and I and I I'm, it's like I'm holding on to to the to like the door of the airplane right about to like skydive, and like I know we're going to skydive, but it's like Ushikoshi is is dragging me out, and I'm like, are you sure we should be jumping this soon? Is it time? <laughs> He decided it was probably best to say nothing. What June was saying was insane and utterly absurd. If he tried to make what she was saying seriously, he'd go mad. Um, well, uh... <laughs> Junpei smiled uncomfortably. Well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But... Her voice trailed off and she glanced at the floor, troubled. Come on, let's get back to it. Junpei tapped Jun gently on the shoulder and awkwardly reached around her to pick up the knife from the box. Rusty knife! Oh, this this thing is gonna snap. I can I can see the the line on the model in between like uh the the front and the back, unless it's like actually a container and not meant to be a weapon. We are really in trouble. I know I'm just repeating myself, but this is really a futility moment. That blade is so rusty. Yeah, I know. We can't cut a damn thing with a knife like this. If we're going to cut anything, we probably have to sharpen the knife. Is she saying... F is she saying futility in the sense of, like, because we did our first ending with everyone dying by being stabbed? This is the precursor to the stabbing? Like it's an omen? Could be. Unfortunately, I didn't play the universe where I got all this first. Uh, where else do I want to look in this room? I think I looked at all of this. I looked at these. So, yeah, I guess we got all... All, all of our plates lined up. Maybe this table's for preparing food. There are plates everywhere. Oh, stove. All right, it's going. Do you think this was all part of Zero's plan? Probably. Kind of hard to believe there's a chef on board somewhere. I don't know, cooking. Oh, a countertop. There's a rolling pin and colander here. Nothing useful. Damn it, there's nothing in here. Hey, Santa. Digging through the trash really suits you. Jeez! What the hell did you say? Listen, lady, I did you a favor. I knew you'd just piss and moan, so I did it for you. Oh my, I don't recall asking you to do anything. Ugh. I ought to throttle you. Excuse me. Does, does it feel colder in here? You need to- y'all need to cool it. And we know Lotus would moan about it too, because we know how she acted around those toilets. Dishes. A sink. It's still got water in it. 
There's a couple of plates in there, but I don't think they're gonna help us much. Whetstone! Let's combine this with a rusty knife. We're gonna make this knife so sharp, like those guys that buy knives so rusty and save them. Maybe I'll use the whetstone to sharpen the knife. The blade of the knife is getting sharper by the second. I should be able to cut something pretty good with this. And it simply comes off like nothing at all. Okay. Anything else uh, that I missed? Wow, what a nice dish rack. I love to have that in my kitchen. Why don't you take it back with you? Are you offering to carry it for me? Why don't you ask Seven? You're kidding. You don't honestly think I'd let a beast like that into my home, do you? They have the shipping energy. <laughs> it's like, it's like they keep being like, as if I would ever blah blah blah, hate of it. It's like, these two definitely got shipped. I can see it. A big bucket made of tin. There's nothing inside. Hmm. Did I really see everything? No, I didn't see it from this angle. There's a keypad here, but I don't really have anything yet. All we've got here is a pot and frying pan. Oh, and a pressure cooker. Well, I guess we could use some of those as weapons. That's what I'm saying. What kind of an idiot are you? Hey! You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? Oh my goodness. The, the, <laughs> this is the localization room. <laughs> There are some bottles of seasoning in here. It's a grill. There's some coals down in there. They're bright red. Looks like the area under the plate opens up. No, you can't. I already checked. It sealed shut. I think that's where the coal goes. I gotta find meat. This is a door we came through. It's not locked, so we could go back out, but what's the point, right? All that's out there is an iron gate and a dead end hallway. Yep. Might as well be locked for all the good for all the good going back out there'll do. This is the display area above the buttons. An iron oven. Looks pretty heavy duty. It's an oven? It's probably industrial quality. You bet you could cook anything with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Damn, I knew it. It's locked. There's a pot on top of the stove. If there are some ingredients around here, I could cook something up for us. Notice you can actually cook? Who the hell do you think I am? You'd better believe I know how to boil hot water and put in my instant noodles. And, and I can boil eggs too. No, oh, I can't even boil eggs. I, I, I can't judge. Hmm. Am I missing something? I feel like I'm just turning myself around in this room. There's an iron plate over the door. There's no way it'll open. What about these? Right, 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 right. The oil, the oil, the oil. I forgot I had the oil. It won't budge. Of course, maybe if I put some oil on it. Hey, just a little bit of oil and come on. Come on, you little son of a bitch. Whoa. Ha, yes, got you, you little bastard. You did it, Jumpy. You're so smart. Open the door, what do we win? Oh, it's a freezer. As Junpei walked into the room, a blast of cold air washed over him. Almost instinctively, he folded his arms tight across his chest, doing what he could to conserve body heat. Oh, it's cold in here. What is this place? Are you blind? It's a freezer. Oh, jeez, is that cold? That uh, your, your Santa's teeth had already begun to chatter. Hardly surprising. The freezer was far too cold for someone dressed as he was. Lotus, however, was in an even worse situation. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. And with that, she ran out of the room. As Lotus left, June came in. Oh, whoa. 
It's really cold in here. White puffs of steam hovered in front of their faces as they talked. June had already started to shiver. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Junpei had scarcely opened his mouth. Huh? When the thunderous sound of metal upon metal rang out from behind them, in unison they spun around to find the, that the door that they had only recently come through was closed. What? Whoa! That's not just closed. That's closed and something burst and froze the door. <laughs> <laughs> Junpei rushed to the door. No! Why did it suddenly close? Desperately, he grabbed hold of the doorknob. Ah! It was cold, beyond cold. Merely touching it was painful. The knob's frozen! But why? They quickly deduced that the pipe next to the door had ruptured. It looks like the pipe next to it broke, and... Water released by the rupture had hit the door and froze it instantly. Santa shoved Junpei aside and pounded against the door. Hey, Lotus! You're out Lotus. there, right? Open the door! She wasted no time in responding. What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side, please! Oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. Soon, they could hear Lotus on the other side of the door. <laughs> then the grunting ceased, and they could hear light panting, as if from exertion. It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Lotus, this is kind of a problem. It's a freezer. Oh. This isn't, this isn't a more people on the inside can figure it out situation. <sighs> Santa was shaking like a newborn deer. June was hugging herself and was shivering violently. Even Junpei, with the heaviest clothes of any of them, was clearly feeling cold. With every breath they took, they could feel the cold working its way deeper and deeper into their bodies. Anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're, we're gonna be permanent residents. Two heads are better than none. Oh no. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure something out. Is it that cold? Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. They pushed in close to one another and began to search. Okay, uh, what's in here? Meat? Can I not cl click? Click? Dry ice? Dry ice? Can't you make that stuff cause an explosion if you scale it in something that's airtight? Explode? Yeah, didn't you do that in school? You should never underestimate the power of expanding gas. Huh? Dry ice. We might be able to cause an explosion if we put in something airtight and make it melt. Junpei picked up the dry ice with his sleeves so as to avoid burning himself. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. They were about to move on when June spoke up. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Junpei looked at her, dumbfounded. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. 
Hey, rule zero gets the best of us, especially when we're freezing in a, a, a freezer. Oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? If it's that cold, it's a real... If Man, no freezer should be that cold, should yes, it? Let's fight. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? June giggled and did her best to hide her guilt. At least she was still feeling good enough to joke around, Junpei told himself. Oh, she's a kidder. Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? It blows up! I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Santa was now shivering at an astounding rate, but his curiosity seemed unaffected. I, for I forget what it is. I've only had to deal with dry ice, like, once or twice. It's very volatile and dangerous. You can't mess around with it. Junpei. It did seem rather odd. Let's take a moment to consider the dry ice. We got time. Uh, it is kind of weird. June answered. Oh, but it can turn into a liquid. Liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. Ah. Oh. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure. It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? Well, <sighs> adjusted my chair. June replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well... You could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees? Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Junpei was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. He did his best to warm up by rubbing his arms and stamping his feet, then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Well, it's in brackets, so I'm going to write it down. <laughs> if it's in brackets, it's important. Ice 9. 96 degrees. Ice 9? You've heard of Base 9? Get ready for Ice 9, baby. Originally, Ice 9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice 9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So, you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this Ice-9 are like that? Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new, crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, 
A seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. This is kind of how you do instant snow. That's crazy. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. And now it's happening everywhere. Junpei was honestly impressed or was kind of annoyed. Why would he be annoyed? Because, because we're in the freezer? Was honestly impressed. It was, in fact, a pretty interesting story. Wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. But, uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? To his surprise, it was Santa and not June who answered. What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened, I mean. A lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees... Man. It'd be the end of the world. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with the proper concern. At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. He was right. Junpei shivered. All right, guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. So seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. <laughs> I freaking hate the cold. But isn't... Never mind. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Santa stomped off, clearly doing his best to pretend the cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Still, Santa was right, and it was high time they got back to their search. Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and resumed his search of the room. Err... Uh... So this needs to be tightly sealed. I'm just clicking the... There's some frozen meat up there. Looks like pork. Huh? What's this? It looks like a tag or something. Chunk of pork. Jumpy, is there a slip of paper in that meat? I think there's something written on here, but I can't read it like this. If we try and pull it out, it'll rip. You need to defrost that. Don't think we're gonna be doing that in this room. All right, for later then. Uh, hey Junpei, didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah, there's a warm water coming out of that pipe. Warm water and dry ice. What do you think would happen if we put that stuff in a sealed container together? But where's the container? I'm trying to see if I can find it. Frozen chicken. Hmm. Warm water and dry ice makes CO2, and if you inhale that, you will suffocate. Watch out. There's ice surrounding the doorknob. There's water dripping from this pipe. Hmm, it looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in place. This water actually seems almost warm. I feel like I'm blind. No luck, it's too hard, I can't break it. 
There's too much mist to see what's going on over at the other end. Everything's frozen in here. Doesn't look like there's anything else interesting. Container. Because I thought it was like on top of the 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 case, but there's just there's just more meat in here. And then there's nothing more on the shelf. This? This thing is covering something. It's frozen solid. I can't flip it over. There's warm water flowing in the pipe. A cover. It's frozen in place. I can't get it off. A uh, knife to meet you? <laughs> oh, man. Like, I would just try to take the warm water and move it. So norm up. That ice keeps the doorknob from moving. I can't open the door as long as it's here. Maybe I put, if I put some of the dry ice into a sealed container with some of that warm water. Do I just put the... In he... The, but I found the ice in here, so this can't be the sealed container. Can it? Do I have what? a sealed container? My first instinct would be to use the knife as an ice pick, but I doubt that would work. Right? Nothing special about that. Combine. Let's just see what happens. No. It's bringing up the... 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 the menus and things, and I'm worried about that. I don't have an option to push, is the problem. Whenever I click the fridge, I just get closer to it. Oh, the floor. Okay, there is a grate on the floor that I did not perceive. Water bottle. There's so much stuff in here. Why don't we take some of it out, Jumpy? Sturdy rope. There isn't anything else here that looks useful. Okay. Um. We got some goods. I didn't even realize that was a separate container. Combine it with the water bottle? No. Oh, um. I think I get it. Water bottle. Water. No, I can't collect it? A water bottle. Yes, it is. It's a rope. Well, we could use it to attach it to something else, I suppose. Rope and dry ice. Huh. Well, I thought I was onto something. Shoot. Hmm. I was so excited to have have new stuff to play with. Why can't I use the water bottle on the water? Hmm. I'm cl like, I imagine I can't put the frozen ice in there, and the sealed container can't be that, because then the floor would just explode. Water bottle. Oh man. Let's start off by putting the dry ice into the water bottle. But the dry ice is too big. Well, you gotta figure out a way to make it smaller then, don't you, genius? Jeez! I thought I tried doing the... 
dry ice with the knife, like a knife pick, but damn. Okay, well, we've just got to figure out how to make the, the ice smaller with all of our tools at our disposal. How do we make it smaller? Oh, man. So I would want to do it with the knife, but it said no. No, that's not how you do it. Um, knife and rope. Meat, somehow make it smaller with... What? Huh? I don't understand. <laughs> all right, the dry ice is all in pieces now. Dry ice crumbled. What did I do? Did I just use the bone in the chicken to crumble the ice? But then why wouldn't I just use the knife handle? <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> what did I do? Wait! <laughs> what did it? What did it? What did I? Do? The meat is frozen, so it's super hard. Oh! <laughs> so, but not that meat. Not the. Not this meat, though, with the paper in it. We need to use the other meat. Ah! <laughs> ah! Gosh, ain't that just the way? Well, now we can combine the dry ice with this. I'm gonna put these pieces of dry ice into the water bottle. Is it shaped? Was it actually shaped like a hammer? I guess my pattern recognition sucked for that one. I guess I was too focused on seeing it as like a chicken leg or thigh or whatever. Water bottle of dry ice in it. Okay, let's get out of here. There's warm water flowing from the pipe. Not yet, Junpei. We're not gonna get the result we want unless you can hook that bottle to the doorknob somehow. It's gotta explode right next to the ice on the doorknob. We need to figure out a way to attach the bottle to the doorknob. Combine. Let's just tie a rope on here. How did you knot this to- wait, how did you knot this like this? How did- wait, but how did you do it like this? Oh, the modeling on this does not make me feel confident that this would work. You know what I mean? Warm water dripped from the ruptured pipe near the door. Put water into the bottle with dry ice and make sure the lid's closed. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. Alright, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? Huh, a small rock. Junpei looked down at the floor. Scattered across it were pieces of dry ice left over from the larger chunk he'd crushed earlier. All right, this ought to do the trick. Don't pick that up with your bare hands. He pulled a sleeve down over his hand to keep from getting burned and grabbed the chunk of dry ice. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. I f Can it burn you through your clothes? I've never tried. At least it's been so long that I don't really remember. It was a pretty good size, about as big as a pool ball. All right, guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Both Santa and June looked at him with new concern. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Yeah, there is. Look, right here, we can hide in there. All right, time to get locked in, the, in a new place. Junpei pulled open the door to the small cellar. Come on, get inside, quick! Santa and June nodded and jumped down into the hole. Junpei quickly followed. In his hand, he could feel the chill of the frozen carbon dioxide even through his sleeve. He tightened his grip, took aim, and prepared to throw. All right, here I go! 
Three, four, five. What? You're counting the wrong way. Oh, oops. <laughs> that is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. All right, here I go. Three, two, one. Junpei threw the chunk of dry ice as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked down into the cellar with Santa and June, just as... Junpei leapt up out of the cellar and ran to the door. Jumpy! The ice on the door! Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone! The blast must have shattered it. Yes! All right, let's see if it opens. Junpei grabbed the knob and pushed with all his might. The door gave way easily and all three of them tumbled out of the freezer at once. Hooray! We're out! June, relieved, collapsed onto the floor. Move! Santa shoved past Junpei and ran straight to the grill, which he immediately grabbed. Oh, God damn it! Hot, 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 hot. Fuck! Why'd you grab the grill? He proceeded to kick the grill in a futile but amusing fit of rage. Well, you did just grab the grill. What did you think would happen? Hey, where's Lotus? It took Junpei only a moment to find her. She was sitting on the counter, idly scratching her chest. Ooh, uh, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. With a great yawn, Lotus lowered herself off the counter. Jupe clenched his teeth and walked toward her. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out all right, didn't it? But, what the hell? <laughs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Oh, don't give me that crap! I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? I'm not allowed to progress through the puzzle without you, Junpei. I'm not allowed. None of us are. <sighs> That's why we yell at you. I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? It was true that there wasn't much she could have done, but something about her tone. Junpei gritted his teeth. Fine, but there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Wait, what? You think I closed the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess. People die when they die. It seemed that an accident was the only explanation for the door's closure. If she really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murderer. Junpei swallowed his anger and did his best to apologize. Well, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. She's like, I forgot about it already. Lotus looked away and twirled her hair between her fingertips. His vengeance against the grill complete, Santa swaggered back toward Junpei and Lotus. Hey, no more screwing around, you two! Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. They hate each other now. Hmm. Well, we know what to do now. Let's go cook! We're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking! 
cooking up a cooking up a pork. Guess I'll put this meat on the grill. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to do if the paper burns? Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna burn right away, right? We just gotta keep an eye on it, and the paper will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm gonna keep an eye on this pork. Cool. Looks like it's about time. I'm gonna try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. Sweet of her to care, but I know what I'm- Ow! See? I told you. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So are we gonna have to cut the meat? Yeah, it looks that way. Good thing we have a knife. All right, now that I've sharpened the knife, yes, I cut the pork. Awesome, Junpei. Now we can cut out the paper. C plus 10 plus F. Okay, um, so if we're going with the base nine stuff, that would be, that would be 12 plus 10 plus 15, which would be 37. And just in case, if we need the digital root of that, it would be one. Is that just the code? This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. Maybe if we put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Junpei, maybe the note you found earlier. Yeah. I know. Do you know how to enter those numbers? I think E is for enter and C is for clearing. So basically, when I'm ready to submit my answer, I press E. So if I screw up, I just press C, right? Otis nodded. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's start with 37. Okay, that's not it. How about one? Okay, that's not it. Well, Shoot. Let's see, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, that's 10, and then F is 15. So, and five plus two. Hmm. Shit, it didn't work. You think the note we found in the pork wasn't a hint? C plus 10 plus F? There aren't any letters on the input device. Hmm. Maybe if we can find a way to convert letters to numbers. Oh yeah, the voucher we found next to the plates had some letters on it, didn't it? Maybe they've got something to do with it. Did it? That voucher next to the plate? Oh, right. That's what we originally used to, um, look at the plates. There's a voucher at the end of the counter. This voucher doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seed food dish F on the voucher. And the plates on the table are 9 appetizer, 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Huh? Wait, okay. So the paper says appetizer 9, meat 10, soup A, C, F. But the plates on the table... I'm also going to write... 9... 16... 10... 15. Okay. The only one that's out of place is me. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here. And hexadecimal is... It's a number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11. What? Hex, I'm gonna write this down, hexadecimal. Eight, nine, A, B, 
C B E F 10 11 <laughs> You're familiar with base 10, right? That's the normal system of numbers. The base 10 equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A is 10, B, okay. Oh, okay. So I'll also write this down. So A is 10, B equal, okay. So I, I gl I'm glad that I kind of just gleamed that uh, so far. I feel like I've also seen it before as a joke in other circles. Like, um, uh, F equaling 15, and F and chat. There we go, F is 15. Okay. And 10, 10 equals 16. Oh, that's interesting. 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added to the normal number system after nine. A equals 10, B equals 11, etc., etc., and so on. Well, then what happens after. Like, do you go back into letters after 19? Like, would it pick up 16, 17, 18, 19, 20? I think I get it. That feels like something I should know. Hang on. So there's... Oh man, I, you know what? I might write that down after stream. For now, I'm gonna focus on... Oh, and so then... C, C plus 10 plus F. That's actually, hang on, let me erase this equation that I did. I simply, I simply was missing a part of the hexadecimal. It's actually 12 plus 16 plus 15. So if we go from 27 plus 16, I'm bad at math once you start getting into multiple digits. Hang on. Nope, wrong button. Um, and you. I forgot I had a calculator, honestly, trying to do all this math in my head. 43. All right. Now let's go back around. Password, right number, da 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 let me in, let me in, let me in, 43. Yay! And hexadecimal doesn't have a 20, that's a 1A? Whoa, sounds like metal is falling. Well, I guess that went well. Yeah! The door opened! Good job, Jumpy! Hooray! Hooray! Saturn key! Saturn key! Saturn key! We've solved the puzzle. Let's get out of here. We have we have sought the gay trout. Yes! I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy! Let's get out of here. Hooray! Yes, let's go! Closing up my notes book. I think we've been here before. A metal grate stretched from wall to wall. Beyond it were two elevators and the entrance to the kitchen. The elevators are over there, so that means... We went into the kitchen through that door and came out on this side. That means the map was right. Looks like. Hi, Riley! <laughs> Riley Ray, Riley Ray, welcome to the stream! Uh, my name is Katie Disp, you can call me Katie. How was your stream? Uh, I hope you had a good Halloween. 
We're not gonna be going for too much longer, but we've got plenty of story left. I'm just kind of hoping for a nice stopping point soon-ish, but feel free to hang out. We're playing 999, the known rate games. We've gotten one ending before. We're going through a new route. We just got out of the four door puzzles and we're kind of just chilling. So feel free to hang out. It was good. I was also playing 999. Nice. Uh, are you ahead or are you, uh, er, er, well, I mean, I'm assuming you're much, much ahead. I took a break from playing this, so welcome. I've never played this before, so I'm kind of just fumbling about listening to all these theories and nodding along like, uh, okay, I'm trying, uh, uh, is, it, is this time travel? I gotta go. <laughs> Which speaking of, let's, let's, let's get back to shenanigans and figure out what's going on. Then let's use it to plan our next move. Ooh, you have two endings figured out. You also took most of October off from playing this. Ah, I see ya. So you're ahead of me, but not too far ahead. Cool. Next move. Yeah, we need to decide where to go from here, don't we? He's right, let's get started. From the looks of it, there are four possible routes. I like how this this group is is very much focused on the maps. Like before with uh, Snake and Seven, uh, it just felt like we were um, kind of just making sure the doors were open. But this time we're like, all right, we're navigating. Let's just keep it simple and call them A, B, C, and D. Hmm. First, A and B. That's both true. seem to connect to a room that looks L-shaped. That is true. You raise you raise an excellent point. Yeah, there were two doors. But they were both locked. We couldn't open them. Now, route C. This goes all the way to the main staircase. That means it's door five. One of the numbered doors. Then do you think we would meet up with the other four after this hallway? Yeah, because we were hanging out in here before. Like, this is where we came out of the, the gambling room. No, I don't think we will. Why not? Look, there by the stairs. See how the gate is opened? They are already ahead of us. When we went into the kitchen, it was closed. But it's open now. What do you think that means? They opened it. Most likely. And if we take Route C, we're going backwards. That would be pointless. Then that means... All four looked at the map. They all looked at the staircase, its lazy curve leading down deeper into the ship. Route D, then. D it is. Yep, Route D. Then we're set. Ew. They jogged down the stairs until they reached the sea deck. Everything looks okay here. Let's check the next deck just to be sure. Yeah, just like I thought, D deck is totally underwater. Blood. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. The water gazed back at them, its smooth surface like a great mirror. At least the water level hasn't really changed. Small comfort. May as well head back to Sea Deck. Hmm, what else is here? There are two elevators over there at the top of the stairs, just like the floor above. Hold on, these are kind of different. See, there's a card reader on the side. Another strange mark. Hey, look, it's Lotus's symbol. No, don't say that while she's here. You huh? you dingus, that's so mean. See, it's the woman symbol with horns on it. Like you shouldn't say it at all, but especially not right to her face. That seems like. Look, deserved. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. Lotus had taken hold of Junpei's hair. She began to shake him violently, and he thought he heard a low growl coming from her throat. What was that about the mark again? This game is so mean to Lotus. Mean to her! 
She's just a mother trying to figure out what happened to her kids. Uh, uh nothing. <laughs> In Riley stream, we got good faith ableism from Junpei, followed by bad faith misogyny from Junpei. Junpei, Junpei has some things to figure out. Has 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 extended reflection that must needs be done once he hath escaped from yonder ship. Whoa, whoa what happened to mind vocabulary? <laughs> the Final Fantasy. <laughs> Such violence, such devastation. Junpei began to wonder if she was not the devil itself. With an uncomfortable smile, June spoke up. This is a mercury symbol. Like I said then, Ushikoshi does not understand woman. What is a woman? The horns symbolize the wings on Hermes' staff. Hermes, herpes, whatever. Shut up! If we can't get this thing to work, these elevators aren't going anywhere. In other words, we need a key card with the Mercury symbol on it. Probably. I guess we can't get on then. Let's just disregard the elevators for now. <sighs> Little yawn. I'm just going to I'm just going to look at that as just a very 2009 thing to say and just move on. I'm like, woof. Glad we're not. Glad that's not heard so often nowadays. Anyway. <laughs> How about this hallway on the left? <laughs> yeah, he is an early 2000 ass baby. Absolutely. Whoa, there's so many doors. They weren't sure how many, but certainly enough to be discouraging. Damn it. If we try and search all these, the sun's gonna go down before we've done half of them. I think the sun already set. I have a feeling this ship is the only thing that's going to be going down anytime soon. That's even worse. Well, we can come back to this hallway later. Let's check the hallway on the other side, shall we? You know what? That's a good question. Folks coming over from Riley's stream, uh, we are heading towards the three doors. I don't know if we're going to do new doors tonight since we've done two puzzles already, but... Like what? What doors have you done? Cause I was a I was a little little evil evil little little creature uh, and went to, to door three to the, the first time. To their right was a small hallway. And now the right hallway. We should go through door three again, again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quickly, they headed into it. It was approximately the same size as the alcove in front of the stairs. The hallway led towards the stern, and at its end was a set of double doors. Uh, there are doors here too. Uh, well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them. All right, let's start with this one. Junpei nodded and grabbed the one closest to him. He gave it a small tug and felt it move. Oh, it isn't locked. I'm going to open it. Thrilled to have found an unlocked door, he threw it open. Show me the boys. Show me my boys from boys' night. Junpei didn't know what to make of what he saw. What? Oh, I thought they would be here already. He simply stood, unable to speak. The others simply stared, open-mouthed. After a few long moments, Santa managed to speak. What, what the hell is this? This place is huge. Hi, B. How are you? A massive room stretched out in front of them. More a cavern than a room. Happy Halloween! Its vastness was oppressive, and it bore down on the companions. It was not empty, however. The entire room was filled with lines upon lines of beds. Oh, there are beds everywhere. And more. They were simple things, little more than pipe and thin mattresses. Is, is this a hospital? It's still Halloween and already we're playing games about Santa. Santa! <laughs> Tis the season, what can I say? 
He had at least been able to put a name to the harsh scent that pervaded the room. It definitely has the smell. Could be. I see medicine cabinets and surgical tools. I just realized I said least, but it was last. Hey, look there. The four doors at the end. Three of them were emblazoned with large single-digit numbers made with thick red paint. The left door says three. The second door is blank, but the third has a seven. And the rightmost door is eight. Eight. There's no doubt. They're numbered doors. Why is the second door blank? Well, I know why. Because when you go into the, th the three door, you can leave after doing the puzzle and come back through this door. That seems kind of strange, don't you think? No point worrying about it right now. Let's see if these will open first. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. Junpei headed toward the doors, weaving his way between the beds. He started with door three on the left and moved to the right until he reached door eight. And they're not active right now. That's another thing. We don't know the mystery behind how these got reactivated oh, no technically. Use. Well, of course. If it was that easy to open these doors, what would be the point of the notary game? We have to activate the red, or the numbered doors won't... Wait a minute. What's wrong? Look, the display on the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember? The red at the central staircase? If no one was inside, it said vacant. Oh yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing on it. Right? I wonder if it's broken. Only one way to find out. Touch. 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 It's not responding. All four took turns placing their hands over the red, but it refused to respond. They pulled at the lever, and still, it did nothing. As they stood... Or as they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red for door 8 that was behaving strangely. How about the red on door 7? And door 3? None of them are working. What does it mean? <laughs> I knew it. They're broken. Zero sure sucks at maintenance. No, that's impossible. You really think Zero, who prepared all of this, would make such a stupid, simple mistake? Maybe, but that doesn't explain why this thing ain't working. It was at that moment that they heard a voice from behind them. I believe the bottom of the device has been removed. They spun around to see... Snake! It's our boy! But it was more than just Snake. Ace! Clover! Seven! Although they were glad to see one another, it wasn't terribly surprising that they had. If it had been the other party who'd opened the gate in front of the kitchen, it wasn't unreasonable that they'd bump into one another eventually. The rest of Snake's team, however, did look rather surprised. How? How did you guys... How did you end up here? That's my line? Perhaps we should exchange information. And so they did. After a moment of silence and surprise, everyone suddenly began to talk, desperate to exchange information. They talked about the rooms they'd been through and how they'd ended up in the same place. Of course, none of it was very useful information, but that hardly mattered. They were happy to simply see one another again. Although the level of cheer varied greatly from person to person, each one of them was wearing some manner of smile. Although, or almost as though, they had already forgotten about the death of the ninth man. No, thought Junpei, perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps thoughts of his death were what drove them to smile at one another. Not in a morbid or hateful way, no. The ninth man had died. But they were still alive and that was something to be happy about. 
a sort of simple, uncomplicated joy, Junpei thought. The joy of being alive. Still alive. He felt sorry for the ninth man. But more than anything, Junpei was just happy to be alive. There you have it. Our half of the story. His part finished, Ace fell silent. For a moment, Junpei was silent, in thought. Then he spoke. Okay, let me see if I got all this straight. When you guys got here, the bases for the Reds were already gone. And you looked all over this room, but you couldn't find anything. So you figured... that there might be something in the hallway with all the doors. So you went and had a look? Yeah. And while you were looking around, you heard voices. Uh-huh. So you followed the voices and came back here. Indeed. And that was how we found you. Why don't we check those three reds again, just in case? You're right. Huh. There's a long, thin gap on the bottom. I think at this point... Most of the information will be the same. I can't imagine it being it's much a slot different. For something. Uh, probably electronic. At least until we get to the next major split. Well, this isn't good. Because now they've all caught up with each other. They've told each other what they've seen. And now this is the part where it's going to be like, oh, well then, let's split up again. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. So we should be comfy just going to adventure mode for a little bit. Well, uh, what about that hallway over there? Isn't there anywhere else we can go? Only the doors themselves really matter. Every other difference is mostly flavor. Got it. No, there isn't. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. Hospital rooms. That's what's behind all those doors? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. There was an astrological symbol engraved near the keyhole, however. I was able to get a good uh, feel of it. I believe it was the symbol of Jupiter. Yeah. Not again. Those goddamn things are everywhere. I wonder what they all mean. While we're asking what things mean, uh, what's the deal with this room? Can we get the- can we get the meaning on this room, please? Can we get the symbolism analyzed? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. <laughs> Santa hates planets. I hate astrology. Chances are it's the gigantic. And astronomy. The gigantic? What is this gigantic? Now we're going to talk about the gigantic. We did it. We made it to the Halloween party of the gigantic. Woo! The gigantic. She was a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. Actually, the Titanic had two sister ships, and they looked exactly the same. The gigantic was said to be one of them. They intended to make her a passenger liner like the Titanic, but World War I began soon after the ship launched. The British Navy took her over and made her a hospital ship. At some point during the war, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. She ran aground afterwards, so she didn't end up sunk. What happened to her after that? One theory going around is that a man named Lord Gordain bought her. Seemed like he'd been one of the few to survive the Titanic sinking. That trauma turned him into some kind of obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. Soon enough, the guy wanted the Titanic itself. Which was impossible, of course. It's stuck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And that's why we're all saying, leave the Titanic alone! But the Gigantic wasn't. And seeing as she was identical... So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? Yeah, at least I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the Gigantic. Well, uh... This ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship. So, I just figured... Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. 
No, I I've got more. <laughs> you like? Well, uh, I mean, I don't know. <sighs> I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah, sorry about that. Maybe we'll find the proof that he needs through the fields and we'll send it back here. Hey, 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 whoa, wait a minute. Memory isn't back? Oh, that's right. In this timeline, uh, because we didn't go together with them, uh, he'd never explained to Junpei that he has memory loss because he explained it to everybody except Junpei. Yeah. Your point being? Wait, was I the only one that didn't know? Why? Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. What? Huh. A bell. It sounds like the clock in the main stairway. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Huh. Twelve. He simply forgot to tell Junpei amnesia and all that. Ah, I see, I see, I see. It's midnight. Midnight. Then we've still got six hours left, right? We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. That only leaves one place to look. Well, multiple. One? Uh, well, not just one. I gotta stop. I gotta hmm? stop doing the script before the script, especially for the parts that we've oh, already wait. gone over, and I've already Don't done the bits for. Don't tell me you need for. to search all of the other rooms. Don't freak out. We've already searched four of them. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. Yeah, that's true too. There is a there is some moments I've if noticed each of us can where do it's six like rooms a piece. We'll huh? have the other forty eight rooms cleared in no time. There are forty eight other rooms. Yeah, and that see this too. Uh, and maybe? this. Hmm. All right. So everyone knows which area they're searching. Yeah. Yes. We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? Yeah, sounds straightforward enough. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. I hope we can find them within the time limit. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. Right. Then let's do this. I race down the hallway at the speed of sound. It's one. I better get back to the others. Man. Huh? And here we are. What without are they the doing with, over there? without the novel, it really does just kind of fly, huh? It's cool. What happened, guys? What happened? Jumpy, look! Is it going to be the same as before? Vacant? <sighs> Come on, guys, who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. Well... What the hell? What is up with you guys? Well, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah. We don't know. That's true, the horse claps. We don't know. It's very good. When I got back, it was already like this. I've been thinking about sound There's effects no in here. games. That means I was the first one back, but... The missing parts were already back in the red. Like, I thought about, you know, y'all know Clock Tower. Uh, you know how I love, or rather, I used to love playing Clock Tower every year. Um, and, and I saw, like, a thing recently, just, like, looking it up for, for nostalgia Halloween's sake, where it's, like, the comparison of sound effects and, and, and appearances of the original and the ports. Like differences between all the all the versions, and it's crazy how changing a, like certain sound effects just makes certain things what unbearable to listen to. You're right, it's in there. 
what about the other two? It was like, instead of just like a dull like snap for the scissors, you just made them actual like, like metal, like swing, 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 swing. And it's like, ah, my ears, ah. They're the same. Let me take a look. This does not sound good to be repeatedly by my ears. It's just as you said. All right, I, I just want to be sure here. Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, right? Correct. None. <sighs> huh. Wait a minute. And now, and now Snake is missing. Where's Snake? Does that mean that he found them? I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it. But nothing to suggest he didn't either. I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. But whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Maybe he's lost. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know how he gets around in the first place. No! That's impossible! Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing! He can get around as well as anyone who can see! He's a savant! He got the cliché's powers! Leave him alone! So he... He couldn't get lost! That's impossible! <laughs> I'm gonna go look for him! Hey, uh, hold on, Clover! Wait! Well, that didn't work. Damn it. What should we do now? I don't know about you, but it was sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, my spirit left my body. I had to ring it back in. Well, the red is working now. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Thank you. Oh, man, this ain't good. Oh, yes, what an excellent idea. We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. Then remain here if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Let's split up. All right, I'll take this direction. Aw, oh, man. Then I shall look that way. I'll be over here. Vague directions. See you all, later. all in vague directions. All right, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. Well, I know where I want to start. Or at least I think I remember where I want to start. Um, we've already talked to... So the, in the first the first playthrough we did, we wound up talking to Lotus and Ace, but I wound up leaving Clover alone. So I think what I want to do to end the stream... Like, don't finish up this whole section, but go find Clover. I want to at least talk to Clover. We should go check out that hallway with all the rooms. I think this is where okay, she is. Okay, let's go, Jumpy. Because we've got that bookmark now. Oh, it's Ace. Ah, uh, wrong one. Hey, Snake! Where are you? Answer me if you're there! What should Junpei do? Let Ace handle it. Why don't we just leave this area to Ace? We can go somewhere else. I've already talked to Ace this mind. time. And I think the first one we talked but to is... Where? Um. Well, uh, let's see. The first one we talked to is Lotus. So let's go back to um, the first class cabin, right? Let's go check out the first class cabin. Okay, I'm coming with you. Yeah, there she is. Talk to her. Are you all right? <laughs> Look, I know you're really worried, but um, alone, alone. Hmm. Alone. Hmm. I said, leave me alone. Oh. You're so annoying. Just go away and leave me alone. Just looking at you guys is pissing me off. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else. Stop bothering me. Uh, um... Why are you still here? Did you hear me? 
You gotta stop shouting at them. You're stunning them with your with with your roar. Uh. Huh? I do get that some. I do get that though. Like when someone just starts screaming and you're just kind of like you're just kind of like stunned, and then they're like, "Why aren't you doing anything?" You're just like. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we've barely said a word to her. Feel I feel bad for it though. Her bu her puppy's missing. Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just. All right, let's go, June. Uh, yeah. <sighs> we really need to find Snake, for Clover's sake. So, uh, where do you think we should go next? Ah, uh, I mean, you know, since we're here, I might as well finish the dialogue. Why don't we go dialogue. back to Deck? We can take a look at that hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's get going then. Oh, nobody's here. Let's look somewhere else. Oh, right. We just, we were just here. Uh, the casino let's is where she is. Let's take a look around the casino. Okay, Otis. let's go. Hey, what do you think you're doing? The roughest part of that is as soon as Junpei and Jun leave, I think Clover realizes how harsh she's being. Ah, oh, I could see that. Now you pointed out, I could definitely see that. Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. I'm just not seeing it. Really? Maybe you need to look harder. Lotus. I... W the game is so mean to you, but I also wish that the game didn't make you so aloof. I feel... You know what? This game is so mean to Lotus, but also I'm like, but why, but why is she like this? I know that, 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 that she's got more to her than this and she could be really motivated, but also like, is this just, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking, maybe I'm just confused and I need to think about it more. I don't think that's the problem. Like, I wish she cared more. I feel like she's a character who would care more and, and not be so like, yeah, I'm looking for Snake, not looking at all. Yeah, I'm helping, not helping at all. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Care to hear it? No! No, that's all right. Let's go, June. Shoot her down. Was that okay? You don't think we should have listened to her? You would have been upset, June. I know this. No, uh, I I've got a pretty good idea what her proposal would have been. We should be looking for Snake. Huh. Well, where should we go next? Well, hypothetically, this this would be where um, I would go back to the hospital room and we would continue from there, but it is late. It is late. I, I have streamed later than I normally do, mostly because I wanted to, wanted to. So it's not like I'm upset that I streamed this late, but also like I started kind of late and I wanted to stream a bit later and also stream a bit longer, you know, since it's been a while since I've been streaming. It's been, I've been feeling yucky. I've been feeling so icky and yucky, but you know what? I feel so much better. You know why? Because I got, because I got, the Halloween spirit! Yay! <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me today, chat. I had a lot of fun just kind of getting re re caught up with what we did. Uh it's it it has been a while. I still need to put up the VOD for 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 the last part of our first run that we did. And we we made a significant bit of progress today, I feel. It, thanks for the stream, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun! Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this more. Um, hopefully soon. I don't know if I got it in me to try to, to, to jump the gun for a bonus stream this week, but if, if, if things go according to plan, you should see me again, uh, on Friday. I should be back streaming more on Friday. Maybe Saturday too? I don't think I have anything interrupting me on Saturday this week, so we should just simply be good. And... I'll keep you guys updated. Always good to see you. Oh, it's always good to see you, Juby. I hope you've been well. I hope y'all have been well. I hope you've been having a happy Halloween as well. Oh, speaking of which, I gotta actually go make myself dinner. So it's a good thing that I stop uh, before it gets too late into the evening. Which, speaking of, we gotta go figure out who to raid. I gotta, I gotta figure out where to, where to go send y'all folks, cause Halloween isn't over yet. We gotta go. We gotta go. 
We gotta go spread the Halloween cheer! And I think... I think we will spend... We will spread the Halloween cheer by sending you to Piku! Piku is currently playing Subway Midnight, a game that I believe you specifically have to play on Halloween. It is, it is one of those games where you simply must play on Halloween for very specific reasons. And it's also a really cool game. It's just a really cool game. So let's go say hi to Piku. I'm gonna get this set up for y'all. Um, Really quick, Piku streams are 18 plus. I know we've been doing mature streams in honor of just, you know, keep keeping things under control with 999 and its mature topics. Um, But, but Piku Piku stream is also 18 plus, like for real, for real. So if that if 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 you've been covertly laying in wait, leave, go to bed, go eat your candy. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna I'm actually going to I'm going to say hmm. Leave the Titanic is like I thought about it more, and the more I think about it, it's like leave the Titanic alone is very good but also i also you don't often get the, get to get the excuse to say it but but i'm going to say let's do a halloween raid happy halloween actually wait hang on maybe i could do a better one oh shoot maybe i could do a better one hang on quick before the raid runs out while i'm typing this have a wonderful rest of your evening have a wonderful rest of your day. If you go out to get discounted candy or go on the hunt for discounted candy, I hope your search is fruitful. And yeah, I just hope your week is wonderful too. Uh, things are getting colder, so take care of yourself. There's the one, there's the one with double emotes. I'll talk to you later, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye-bye, bye-bye-bye.